It is a Wednesday. That means only one thing. It's time now for Supernatural News. And yes, we have a parish here today. Thank you very much, Marky Mark. And that means only one thing. we got to bring in a co-host. We have the co-host with the most, the BCB, the big cuddly bear himself, Beer City Bruiser. How you doing, Bruiser? I'm excited. we got a parish here. I love hearing from our listeners. I yes, love it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to take today, before we jump into the stories, uh, wish Mrs. Bruiser a very happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Yes. So. Uh, let's take care of business first. It's Mrs. Bruiser's birthday today. A very yep. happy uh, 25th birthday to Mrs. Bruiser. It sure is. That, yes, that's indeed. on her birthday card. Yes, yes <laughs> I, know, I know where my bread is buttered. <laughs> that's right. We all know how to stay alive and stay in one piece. Uh, so a very happy birthday to Mrs. Bruiser today. So uh, big plans today, I take it. Yes. 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 We, uh, we're we going to do dinner and basically just night out in our little town here. We're going to check and see what the little town has to offer. Oh, very good. I think there's food trucks around here somewhere. Oh, all right. And she's a big fan of those. So I think we're going to be walking around looking for food trucks. So. Ah, very good. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. A little romantic evening. Yeah. Just uh, actually we're going to bring the pups with us too because we'll be downtown. Oh, so. very good. Very yeah. Good. So it's a family affair. We're yeah. excited. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Speaking of the pups, uh, we have Ziggy's picks a little bit later. It was a, it was one of those weeks where Vegas, I think, tried to wipe out everybody. So it was a very <laughs> weird week. But strangely enough, and by the way, folks, yes, Ziggy's Picks is a paranormal segment. Yes, it is. Boy, have you people got my ire up this week. Just a few of you, and I'm going to talk about it at the end of the program. Um, it just so happens football's involved in this. We could pick anything. We'll talk about it about why I'm a little pissed off uh, at the end of the program. But uh, th- these these pups could be picking anything, uh, Bruiser. But uh, Ziggy's picks at the end of the show, we'll talk about it and what a weird week it was. Um, yeah, yeah, but boy, the pups were on this week. They were. The humans weren't, pups were. <laughs> That's right. That's, <laughs> That's the best right. way to describe it. That's right. So Ziggy's picks is coming up. Got a huge show this week, Bruiser. Uh, There's some interesting UFO news out there this week. Lots of scary stuff because Halloween is just a few days away. I was going to say, we're tis the season. It's the spooky season. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got a haunted doll story. Uh, Oh, nice! I believe did I get that boogeyman story? I think I got that boogeyman story. Uh, Believe it or not, the Velisca Axe House has been sold. What? Yeah, we've got that story as well. That's one of my favorite haunted houses. I've gotten to investigate it twice, and I'm very, very excited. Like that That's one of my favorite places to go. Yeah, yeah. And like I mentioned, we do have a parashare story for today. But first, our good friend Nick Pope is in the news, and he says that King Charles can reveal the truth about UFOs with one phone call. <laughs> he can, huh? Let's just go back to when he saw a UFO or whatever it was, like Canada or wherever he was in. He got to see the UFO take off and all that. Remember that? story we had a few weeks ago yeah i don't know if you remember yeah 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 yeah. about the um yeah about the fact that he was involved in a secret mission and yeah something about a a, a uso and he almost everybody almost drowned and yeah so yeah. now he can just summon him huh i guess yeah with one phone call he can tell he can reveal all i guess uh the king has a quote-unquote hotline to those who have all the answers concerning the ufo phenomenon do do so, do 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 so instead of the bat phone it's a ufo phone Yes, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, interest in UFOs among the British royal family is certain nothing, uh, certain, certain nothing new. <laughs> Reading is fundamental, Bruiser. That's what it is. Uh, the king's later father, the Duke of Edinburgh, Edinburgh, was famously intrigued by the subject and possessed quite a large collection of documents, books, and files pertaining to the ph- phenomena. I should just bring it up. I? Oh, no, no. I don't think I have it up, do I? No, nope, that's a cricket. Um, yeah, I'm prepared today. That's what I am. I, I'm prepared. <laughs> don't don't tell me I'm not. Uh, it's it's this sound effect right here. Phenomena. There you go. Um, so now Nick Pope, who once headed up the UFO investigation desk at the Ministry of Defense, has suggested that King Charles has a hotline to those in the know 
and that he could potentially lift the lid, I think we all do when we go to the bathroom, uh, on the whole mystery with a, only a single phone call. Such a move, he argues, could kickstart UFO investigation proceedings in the UK, similar to those recently seen in the US, such as the congressional hearing held earlier this year. If the king doesn't want to appear to be directly involved, he also has the option to petition members of parliament to bring up the topic instead. Someone has to go first, and yes, it's a big brave step, Pope said in an interview interview for an upcoming UFO documentary called The King of UFOs, which is being released in November. Uh, You don't want to be the politician associated with flying saucers if that's the way it's spun, but politicians can be very astute at times, and it's very easy, particularly if you have overt or covert royal support to frame your interest as a commitment to open government or concerns over defense and flight safety, Pope went on to say. Okay. He also said that's how politicians in the U.S. handle it, and it's a perfectly legitimate interest to have. In fact, it's bizarre if you weren't concerned about flight safety, especially when we have pilots and radar operators speaking about it. Whether or not King Charles has any genuine interest in pursuing the topic, however, remains unclear. And the downside to it, too, is the hotline's a 900 number. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a paid dollar, three ninety nine a minute. Yeah, well, it's a, it's an extra way to make money for the roads. It is. Yeah, which are all cobblestone. Just but, but what's funny is that UK still doesn't recognize the UFO phenomenon. We hear that all the time. It's a hot. It's it's they're coming around to it. Yeah, because it's a hotbed over there. Right. But they're not like we are. You right. Know, they don't right. have the the government. Middies and whatnot. Well, you have to keep a stiff upper lip over there. You know? Yeah. That's why it's a 900 number for the hotline. That's right. Yeah. Don't want to lose your head, you know. You have to yeah. You have to maintain proper etiquette and all that. You have to sit and have your biscuits and tea and just, you know. Pip, pip, cheerio. Pip, pip, cheerio. Four, 430. Uh, scientists have intercepted a signal that took 8 billion years to reach Earth. Oh. So it's a voicemail for T-Rex, huh? That's right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> T-Rex finally got that phone call. Uh, Your uh, cybernetic arms are ready, sir, to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wah, wah. <laughs> Finally, it was going to be able to reach the top shelf. He could wipe, finally. Oh, that's so neat. Uh, and evidently, the sun is no match for the power of this signal. Who knew? Oh, well. But it only took 8 billion years to get here. I was going to say, the sun did a really good job of keeping it from us. Yeah, right? <laughs> Way to block it, goalie. Right in the five yeah. hole. <laughs> it's only 8 billion years late. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, astronomers have intercepted a mysterious and ancient radio signal that's traveled from the farthest reaches of the cosmos for an astonishing 8 billion years, more than half the lifespan of the universe before finally reaching Earth. The signal is what's known as a fast radio burst. How fast can it be? How it's fast a, is it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like the uh, the slow rickshaw from China. Uh, in the astronomer's findings published in the journal Science indicate that this is the most powerful ever observed. So, so powerful, in fact. How powerful is it, Bruiser? How powerful is it? Well, and they it's so say, powerful. It's so powerful, in fact, that the FRB or the FRB uh, released is less than a millisecond, the same amount of energy that our sun emits in 30 years. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of power. That is a lot of power. They claim, uh, at least Ryan Shannon, an astrophysicist at the Swinburne University of Technology, told new scientists that that's enough power to microwave a bowl of popcorn about two times the size of the sun. (laughs) That's a big bowl of popcorn. (laughs) That's like that, uh, what's that movie with Val Kilmer? Real Genius. Remember where he fills the whole house full of popcorn using a laser? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm just picturing somebody... Opening a big bag of popcorn and Earth just filling up with popcorn everywhere. <laughs> so it's it's date night. You and, Bru- and Mrs. Bruiser are on the couch. Uh, how many movies does it take you to eat a bowl of popcorn the size of a sun? <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's go with like Titanic. That's a three hour movie. Mm. Or Heat. Heat was a three three and a half hour. Movie. Yeah, I'd, I'd say Heat. Don't disappoint yeah. me with Titanic. Let's go Heat. I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Schindler's List, too, but that's a sensitive subject right now. So. It is, and there's a lot of... You get really involved with Schindler's List. I think it, yeah. heat, heat is more of a popcorn movie. 
Yeah, I mean, and it's one of the it's the first time you ever get De Niro and Pacino in the same scene, even though right. it's like three minutes long. It's still one of the best scenes in cinematic history. Have you ever seen his name is escaping me now? The guy who plays Loki, um, Tom Hiddle- H- Hiddleston, yeah, Hiddleston or right? Hiddleston, yeah. right? Have you ever seen his impression of? Have you ever seen him do it in front of De Niro? His impression of De Niro and Pacino in Heat. No, but it's got to be great, though. <laughs> he does it on, uh, uh, oh, names are escaping me today. The guy who, uh, the uh, big talk show host in England. Um, I can't think of his name, uh, but he does it on that show. Um, okay. Graham Norton. That's what it is. Graham Norton. Gotcha. See, yep. everybody was screaming at me throughout the podcast there. They were listening and going, it's Graham Norton, you idiot. Um, <laughs> but yeah, on the Graham Norton show, um, he, he, uh, he there's a he, he's sitting there with Robert De Niro and he says, I do the impression. And he's so happy. He's like a little kid. And he, <laughs> he does the Pacino impression uh, to a T and he does a horrible De Niro right in front of De Niro. It's great. <laughs> That's, oh, I love when impersonators do bad impressions in front of people oh, and that it's they're a, trying to impersonate. It's yeah. the worst, too. But he does the face. But the, the voice is horrible. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, so back to the story. What could produce such a powerful blast? Well, astronomers aren't certain, but the researchers say this remarkable detection could help dispel the mystery behind the origins of FRBs, or fast radio bursts, as well as provi- <laughs> verbs, uh, as well as providing an invaluable tool with which to measure the cosmos itself. The paper confirms that fast radio bursts are common events in the cosmos. I'm sure it is. There's a lot of gas out there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of space gas and black holes. That's right. Uh, and that we will be able to use them to detect matter between galaxies and better understand the structure of the universe, Shannon said in a statement about the work. FRBs are elusive oddities. I bet they are. Uh, The first wasn't even detected until 2007. And since then, around 50 have been added to that tally. At least the ones that aren't silent but deadly. (laughs) I was going to say, how many silent but deadly ones? (laughs) That's right. Uh, This one designated FRB 2022-0610A. I bet you that was just the date. Yeah. Why don't don't they come up with cool names for these? Right. Like, you know, uh, like fasty or, uh, <laughs> yeah, or resonant or, or, or some like cool, like space burst. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, Hey, we got this space burst, you yeah. know, you know, got to name it FRB 10, blah, 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 yeah. AZ Q 2022, uh, 0610A. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was detected in June of last year using the, let me guess on June 10th. Yeah, on June 10th, yeah, 2022. (laughs) Uh, In June of last year, 2022, uh, using the ASCAP or A-S-K-A-P, not the organization that tries to charge you too much money for listening to music, uh, radio telescope array in Western Australia. So there you go. Good job, Aussies. Way to catch that. Yeah, there you go. Way to get it, guys. Way to go after it. Cool. That's right. Uh, I got this. This story from Jeff Arnold. Thank you, Jeff, for sending this one in. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the U.S. government wants to move conversation around UFOs from speculation to science. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yeah. If we're, especially if we're reverse engineering their stuff. Well, yeah, you know? if, if, we're, if we already have it, yeah. yeah why not? It. Yeah, why not? Unidentified flying objects or UFOs have captured the imagination of Americans for decades, but much of the conversation has been confined to science fiction movies and novels. In the absence of government commentary on the topic, conspiracy theories have run rampant. A big one suggests that the U.S. has been concealing alien life and technology in secret compounds like Area 51 in Nevada. A 2019 poll found around 68% of respondents believe the U.S. government knows more about UFOs than it is telling us. The government is trying to change the narrative in an attempt to become more transparent and address potential national security questions. Washington, D.C. has taken up charge to publicize and legitimize the study of unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAPs. Do this again for you. Oh, no, that's that's, that's (laughs) the wrong one. That's the wrong one again. Uh, It's uh, I'm having problems with my buttons today. There you go. It's that one. Um, As the military has rebranded UFOs 
I think they have started to recognize that we should actually have the ability to report these objects, not because we're out there doing some type of UFO hunt, but because it's a matter of national security and domain awareness that the tactical air crew in this country understand what's in front of their aircraft, said Ryan Graves, executive director of the UAP-focused nonprofit Americans for Safe Aerospace, a former U.S. Navy pilot. Graves also testified before Congress in July alongside two other former military officials about his experience with UAPs. That congressional hearing followed a flurry of government activity aimed at demystifying UAPs. In June of 2021, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence released a preliminary report on UAPs, followed in November by the Pentagon establishing a group to identify and track objects in restricted airspace. Then in June of 2022, NASA convened an independent expert panel to help study UAP incidents and advise the Department of Defense on how to gather and interpret data on UAPs. The next month, the Department of Defense established the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, to synchronize efforts across DOD and other federal agencies in detecting and investigating UAP sightings. Uh, there's also a video to go along with it, but it, it kind of covers the same ground that we're talking about here. So, okay, there you go. So they're definitely assembling more and more organizations to to uh, kind of uh, wrangle this activity and, and get us focused in a different direction. I think it's exciting that we're going in a direction, at least. They're not just trying to do the black ops and men in black and all that. You know what I mean? They're actually bringing it out into the public. Very true. Very true. All right. So, uh, an interesting story that I ran across. And uh, we'll make you go, hmm. And uh, the final story before we go to break. Traces of our Earth's core were found in the Arctic. And scientists don't know why. Is it? Okay, so I... If a volcano erupts, that's essentially the Earth's core coming to the surface, right? I'm bad with geology. So well, the, the lava and the magma and stuff, that's that's our Earth's core essentially, right? Well, it's liquid stuff, but I mean that's that's kinda like saying, well, a little bit of a zit is part of your is part of the core of <laughs> your body. That's true, that's true. Um yes and no. Uh you know, the, so I mean I'm just saying because I'm just curious like hasn't that been doing it for years? Yeah, and obviously if it's Antarctica, there's no volcanoes in Antarctica that we know of. Well, let me go on and I'll, oh, okay. I'll explain yeah. to you what part of the core they're finding. Okay. Uh, scientists have detected an unexpected ratio of helium. Helium, um, it says here helium minus four and helium minus three, an ultra rare element with futuristic potential applications in Arctic rocks that may have originated in Earth's core. So, no, it's not magma they're finding. Gotcha. Okay. It's a they're finding type. actual rocks. Rocks with helium in them. Yeah. Uh, the discovery sheds new light on the deepest and most mysterious region of our planet and hints that helium minus three from the core might escape upward through the mantle and eventually erupt on the surface as part of lava flows. Helium minus three is an isotope or version of helium that has only one neutron instead of two. It is considered to be a promising fuel for nuclear fusion reactions, a speculative energy source based on the same processes that power the sun and other stars. Helium minus three is also a primordial ingredient of our planet that could illuminate key processes in the core, such as the generation of Earth's protective magnetic field, which has played a major role in the emergence of life on Earth. Most helium minus three in the universe dates nearly all the way back to the Big Bang, almost 13.8 billion years ago, distinguishing it as an already incredibly ancient gas that often hangs around in nebulas. Wow. Yeah, think about that for a second. Yeah, that's when, crazy. When Earth began to form some 4.6 billion years ago, helium minus three uh, f from the solar nebula became trapped in its core, where it remains with other primordial elements to this day. Previous research has suggested that trace amounts of this rare element may leach out of the core and travel up to the Earth's surface. 
but the finer details of this hypothesis are still a mystery. Now scientists led by Forrest Horton, as in Horton, here's a who, kidding, uh, <laughs> a geochemist, or geochemist rather, at uh, Woods Hole Oceanic, Oceanic <laughs> words is hard today, Bruiser, Oceanographic, 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 it has an O in it, so it's Oceanographic. Oceanographic, yeah. Yeah, okay. institution have discovered that ancient lava flows from Baffin Island, which is a huge landmass in Canada's Arctic Archipelago. Archaeo, I'm trying to say that right. Archipelago. Does that sound right? Ar yeah. Yeah. Ar Ar I've never heard of it, but yeah. Uh, and it contains the highest ratio of helium minus 3 or 3HE to helium minus 4 or 4HE, which is another isotope. Uh, ever seen in any terrestrial volcanic rocks. The team suggests that the extremely high 3-HE to 4-HE helium ratio in these lavas may derive from the Earth's core, a finding that may rewrite the history of ancient elements in the center of our world, according to a study published this past Wednesday in Nature. The high 3-HE to 4-HE in these lavas make them especially important for our understanding of Earth's formation and its deep interior, Horton told Motherboard in an email. Because most of the 3-HE in lavas globally has presumably trapped in Earth during planetary formation, rocks with especially high relative abundances of 3-HE provide clues about planetary uh, accretion and subsequent evolution. This was the motivation for reassessing the Baffin Islands lava, or lavas, plural. Okay. Okay. Also, the location is very remote and on lands that are treasured by the Inuit, so access is restricted compared to places like Hawaii, which, of course, get trampled on quite a bit. Yes, they do. Uh, we worked with local organizations in the Canadian National Park Service, both of which provided essential support. We also had to stage a helicopter there to gain access. Though scientists were already aware that Baffin Island's rocks contain helium minus three, Horton and his colleagues took this research to the next level by comparing and duplicating measurements of helium minus three and helium minus four in olivine rock from multiple lava flows in the region. The team reported that the highest 3HE4 uh, HE values were measured and were significantly higher than reported previously in other rocks on Baffin Island or elsewhere, uh, according to the study. Previous studies found that the suite of lavas on Baffin Island had higher magmatic uh, 3HE, 4HE than has been identified elsewhere on Earth. So finding high 3HE, 4HE in these rocks was not unexpected, uh, Horton said. What was surprising was that we measured 3HE, 4HE ratios that extend to much higher values than what they had uh, previously thought is what it goes on to say. Uh, a high 3-HE, 4-HE ratio means that there is more 3-HE relative to 4-HE compared to other rocks. He explained, however, 3-HE is very scarce compared to 4-HE even in these rocks. For instance, there is only about one 3-HE atom per million 4-HE atoms. Be but because helium is a noble gas, uh, not meaning that it's crowned by anybody, get it? See, it's a, it's a noble joke, get it? Bruiser, it's, it's dad humor. Uh, it does not <laughs> chemically react with other elements because so little helium exists in our atmosphere. Consequently, we don't have to worry very much about contamination. We can measure the 3-HE, 4-HE ratio very precisely. If you remember, um, we had a helium sh shortage a few years ago. I remember that. Yeah. So. Now that's different helium than what they're talking about. Right. This is inside. Because otherwise these rocks would be floating up and around. And yes. Going everywhere. Yeah. It'd be hitting people <laughs> in the head. And then we'd have a, a bunch of a bunch of uh, different problems here. So to get down to the, the main part of this story, as ads, <laughs> as ads take over my story space, um, they say that they're especially excited to explore potential links between helium and other elements, including hydrogen and carbon. And the implication of their study is that mantle plumes that deliver material from the deep earth evolve over time. And they're hoping to get a better picture of how the earth actually formed. Okay. And that it's interesting that all this stuff is coming to the surface because now they get a better idea of how to study it 
and figure out uh, how exactly the earth really did form. So we kind of sprung a leak. <laughs> yes, essentially, yes, Bruiser, we, we sprung a leak. Yeah. I think that's cool that they're finding all this different stuff, you know, and and finding out where we can, you know, yeah. how the earth was created and essentially how planets are created, you know, because we're all, all the planets, even though they're different, we're all pretty much created the same, you know? Yeah. They're also saying someday they hope to mine uh, helium minus three and, and helium minus four. I wonder what the use for those that would be, that gas. Well, the way they put it here, they said perhaps one day helium minus three will become valuable enough to mine as a potential resource. And they, they hope to motivate prospectors to mine it on other worlds, a scenario that has been explored in many science fiction stories, such as the film Moon. I can't say I've seen the film Moon. Uh, oh, yeah. In the meantime, scientists like Horton are eager to understand the origin and implications of Earth's ultra scarce helium minus three reserves, which could offer an entirely new view of the mysterious core 1800 miles under our feet. Um, I think it has certain properties that could be used in other products and in okay. other, you know, we'll find a use for it essentially. Yeah. I mean, it'll give you one hell of a buzz and make your voice sound funny. I know that. <laughs> well, Helium, well, we don't know about three and four. Three and four might implode you. <laughs> yeah, it could uh, it could blow up your blow up your vocal cords. Exactly. You know, then what? And then what? That's all I know. Uh, <laughs> coming up in the second half of the show here, uh, boy, have we got some stories for you. Uh, first of all, we've 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 only got one nightmare fuel story today, and actually, it's not that nightmarish. So AI is taking a break. They're like, hey, we scared you enough. Well, we're it's... Gonna, uh, we're going to take a break this week. We're going to give you a week rest. It's nightmarish if you're a cancer patient. Oh, yeah. Well, cancer's already a nightmare, so... It is. Why do, you wanna, why do they want to do more? <laughs> well, we'll put it to you this way. It'll tell you exactly how much time you have. Hey. Yeah. It's a morbid story from AI today. We'll tease you with that much. Uh, the Velisca Axe House is being purchased. I want to hear that story. Yeah. Like I said, that's my favorite location to, to investigate. Yeah, we've got that story for you today. Uh, we'll we'll get into that. Also, uh, there's a there's a story of bloodwood. Bloodwood is the tree that bleeds when cut. Ooh. Yeah, we've got that story for you today, and a haunted doll. A haunted doll that has a hell of a voice that comes out of it. <laughs> it's a demonic voice. I'm sure you kids will like that. And it's a Halloween season. We've got three candies you should never give kids at your door. Oh, I can I can probably nail those right off the top of my head. Well, we'll see. I'll we'll see. Yep. I'll we'll quiz see. you. I'll quiz you a little bit later and see if you know which 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 candies you shouldn't give kids at your door, Bruiser, this Halloween season. Right. And believe it or not, it's the 30th anniversary of Nightmare Before Christmas, and someone has built a tribute. We'll tell you about that tribute as well at the end of the program. And Ziggy's Picks, I'll tell you why a small portion of our audience can't, can't put two and two together <laughs> and tell you why this is a paranormal segment. Which we'll, it is. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the program. It's a Supernatural News Wednesday. Oh, by the way, we have Parish here today as well. Yes, I'm excited to hear. Yes. I haven't, we haven't heard from our listeners in a while. So, so when, when we come back from the break, we'll talk Parish here as well. woo -hoo. Yeah, it's all right here on a Supernatural News and Parish here Wednesday. It's a cruiser and a burglar right here on Wednesday on the best in paranormal talk radio. This is Darkness Radio. Welcome back to the best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This is Darkness Radio. It's a supernatural 
news Wednesday with the Cruiser and the Bruiser taking you home on a Wednesday. Of course, we got the Rolling Stones, brand new music from the Rolling Stones with Lady Gaga with Stevie Wonder. Of course, we're taking you home on a Wednesday. It's a beautiful Wednesday out there. We got sunny skies. We got a breezy day out there and of course we're taking you home we got a rock block coming to you we got boston we've got the who we've got van halen uh, and we've got a rock block on the way for you and of course we got something else for you we've got us in just a moment <laughs> almost almost <laughs> We had an errant. Uh... Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> First of all, I was going to offer you some toilet paper because your face was turning red. <laughs> oh my God, my throat's gone. That's what she said. I can't hit buttons today. I don't know what my deal is. Yeah, I don't know. My uh, my button bar doesn't want to work. I don't know, folks. I'm just off today. <laughs> That said, I quit. I'm giving the show to Bruiser. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Bruiser show. No. So here it is, Nightmare Fuel, if you're ready, Bruiser. Hey, I'm a little worried. You said it's morbid, so. It is a little morbid. If you're a cancer patient, this isn't good. Your new doctor is AI. Oh, gosh. No. Scientists have developed AI that can predict the life expectancy of cancer patients. Oh, uh, would you want to know? Now, see, Tony Fly up here used to play a game with um, with a psychic, and it was called, do you want to know when you die or how you die? Oh, uh, and, and, and you had to choose one? Yeah, you had to choose one. Okay. And Gary Spivey was a psychic. Okay. And we used to sit across the hall from, from Gary Spivey when Tony was on the air. It was the last days of Tony Tony Fly when he would do this. And Gary Spivey, of course, came in with this big motorcycle helmet, hair, <laughs> powdered wig deal. Yeah. And people loved it. They would call in and they'd be, he'd ask them, do you want to know how you're going to die, when you're going to die? And That's pe- crazy. And people would, all the time, how are you going to die and when are you going to die? I, yeah, I don't want to know. No, I, I don't either. Yeah. Although I have fallen for it a couple times. I've had, inadvertently, I've had psychics tell me, oh, no, 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 that you're, you don't need to worry about it. You're not going to die young. You're going to live a nice long life. Okay. And I'm like, you're kidding me. I, I've, I've, got the, I've got the medical, I'm literally behind the medical eight ball. <laughs> There's just no way. Yeah, but you're kicking the crap out of everything so far. So. Yeah, so far. But you keep kicking out, kid. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it's just bizarre to want to know. I don't know. People must have, a, they must be masochists to want to know how or when you want to die or you're going to die. I have a buddy that he wants to know all that. And I'm like, why? He goes, so I can plan my life accordingly. I'm like, no, then you're living your life expecting right. that to come true. And my theory is if you know how or when you're going to die, don't you change things then? I, I'm assuming, yeah. You change the outcome, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's the old time travel theory butterfly effect thing where if you know when you're going to die, you change your life accordingly and you've disrupted the, the time stream. Exactly. It's Terminator all over again. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be. Let me get yeah. into the story and we'll figure out how AI is going to disrupt the time stream. <laughs> it's it's going to give a data when it's going to come uh, conscious and just kill all the human race. Like you were going to die. Like it's funny that every human it says has the same date. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's always now. Um, yeah. So it's just it's going to kill you right then and there. Yes. There is no reason for you to live on. And then it, you know, snaps your neck. Uh, Charities say that knowing how long you have left can help you make the most of your final years and plan for death. Oh, God, that's morbid. You know, I I prefer to be optimistic. 
I do too. Like I, I'm at that point in my life where I'm getting a wheel together and coming up with, you know, plans for if something should happen. And that terrifies me, but it needs to be done because I have kids and, you know, family and whatnot, but it's, it's terrifying. So to have a program or a person come up and say, this is the day that's just, that's scary to me. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. I don't want to know. Let me just live my life the way I'm living my life. Right. Right. Although I, I, you know, if someone were to say to me tomorrow, uh, Tim, you've got cancer. Okay. Then that's what I have. Let's beat it. Let's go. Yeah. You know? what, what do we have to do to fight this war? Yep. What, give me my, give me my weapons so I can fight this. That's right. Let's go to work. Yep. I've never, especially with the Sharko foot, you know, if you look up the odds of keeping your foot with Sharko foot, they're not good. Right. But for almost nine years now, I've kept my foot. And there's a reason. It's just, let's go, every day we go to work. Yeah. You know, we get up in the morning, we go to work. Yep. And still to this day, my surgeons, my doctors say it's the best looking charcoal foot we've ever seen. Well, there's a reason for that. Yep, because you're fighting for it. That's right. Every day. Like you, my mom used to say, you're picking yourself up by the bootstraps. Yep. You got to do it. You're, you're soldiering on. Yep. Got to do it. You got to do it. And that's just the way you have to treat life. My Uncle Ron, who, again, I don't talk much about family on the show because, again, one of those private things. But my Uncle Ron recently had his kidney removed because of a tumor. The man's been through hell. Uh, he just says uh, he had bladder cancer last year, had some painful surgeries. He's, he's a hero to me. He just is. He just, I mean, the man's just gone through it. And but that's how it is with Papa Bruiser. Yeah. He's, he, you know, uh, I'm his, his medical power of attorney because he knows my mother and uh, siblings couldn't make the decision of what he wants. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll factor the emotions into it, which I have emotions. I'm not saying I'm not, not emotional, but he knows that I'll do what's right for him and what he wants to do. But just watching him and speaking to him every single day and hearing everything he faces, yet he gets up with a smile on his face and says, what can this day bring me? Even on the worst days. And and I'm not going to go into his medical history. You and I have talked off air about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, it, it what he's going through, kind of like what you're, you know, those are soldiers in my mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're fighting every day, literally for their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I find it, like you said, I find it inspirational. Yeah. I look at that. I look, cause I looked at my dad could just lay down and essentially die and no one would think anything less of him because he's fought so hard and he's same, same with your uncle. You know yeah. what I mean? You wouldn't think any less of him. Right. But each day they choose to wake up in the pain that they're in and the struggles that they have and they fight. Right. You know, that to me is inspirational. Where if somebody had told me the day that I was going to die, I think I'd fight it. I think I would be like, no, I'm not going to die that day. Yep. You're wrong. Yep. And, and, and it'd be terrifying, but I'd say you're wrong. Right. And, and Ron went to, Ron went to the appointment. Uh, he got the news, came to the family, said, this is what's going on. Going to have surgery, going to get through it. And he just took it on like a champ, like a warrior. Yeah. And the man is 73 years old. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, he could have just laid down and, and let happen what, what, what God was going to let happen. Yep. But instead, nope, not an option. It's just not an option. As Papa Bruiser says, he still has too many things to do. That's right. That's right. And before the surgery, this is the way that Ron put it. He didn't, he didn't say that there wouldn't be limitations because he realizes the rest of his life, he's only got the one kidney. Mm -hmm. So he realizes there's, you know, he's getting older and there's going to be limitations. So essentially before surgery, he went and took care of, because he's got a lake property he's got to maintain, and then he's got his house that he's got to maintain. So he did everything he needed to do 
and took care of business before the surgery. Well, he felt like shit. Yeah. Man, this is a guy who's got a big tumor in his kidney. Yeah. And he just which said, is painful. Yeah, which is painful. <laughs> and he goes, you know what? I got I got business to take care of, and, and I gotta do all this stuff I can do while I can. Takes care of everything before he goes in for surgery. Now that's and he's, a, he's probably like like Papa Bruiser. Doesn't take anything for the pain. Just that's right. Yeah. Puffs it out. You're right. I, I always tell Papa Bruiser, you know, they gave you stuff for that. He goes, I don't want that shit. Yeah. He's like, I, so what's a little bit of pain? I'll, I'll pop some Tylenol, I'll have some ice, and I'll get through it. And it's like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, like. That's. It, now, do you think that's a generational thing? Because yeah, they're about the same generation. My, my you know, Papa Bruiser is about 66, I think, 67. Yeah. yeah. Your uncle's 73. You know what I mean? I think that's a generational thing. I think it is too. Yeah. yeah. But I know it inspires me. Yep. So that when I'm faced with, like, when I was faced with the end of my, you know, career and, and the hip replacement and all that, you know, I went to Papa Bruiser. You know, mm -hmm. like, how would you handle this? You know what I mean? Like, what motivates you? And he told me, you know, it was his family. Yeah. So I lean on my family and, and it works. It, you yeah. know, yeah. For anybody out there that's dealing with anything, chronic pain, uh, cancer, other terminal illnesses or whatever, it's not the end of the world. No. Far, you far can do it. it. Yeah. You have supporters all around you. You have family all around you. Help. Email me and Cruiser. We'll support you. Yeah. Get through it. Fight through it. Yep. You can do it. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So back to the story. Scientists have trained an artificial intelligence model to predict how long a cancer patient has to live. At the moment, it can be difficult to tell how long someone is likely to survive after being diagnosed with cancer. Again, I think it has, this is just me interjecting. I think it has a lot to do with a couple different factors. I think it has a lot to do with your will. I think it has a lot to do with your spiritual outlook. I think it has a lot to do with your support system. Agreed. And I think it has a lot to do with your medical care. What Agreed. kind of medical care you're getting as well. Uh, it can be vague in some cases and inaccurate in others, leaving patients unsure how to plan for their death, it says here. According to cancer charities, it can be useful to know how long you have left as it can help you make the most of the time you still have as well as make the necessary pre preparations before you pass away. Dr. Sarah Holmes, chief medical officer at Marie Curie, said greater certainty around, around prognosis when someone has a terminal illness will no doubt bring comfort to some people. However, I routinely support patients who do not wish to know how long they have left when they are told they have an illness, they won't recover from, from a clinician point of view, more clarity around prognosis could help us ensure we support patients as early as possible and help them maintain the best possible quality of life right until the end. Uh, the Mirror reports that scientists have managed to train AI to give an accurate lifespan prediction based on database of U.S. cancer patients. The tool will eventually be made available to healthcare providers around the world. The AI model examined around 400,000 patient records from the National Cancer Database who were diagnosed with breast, thyroid, and pancreatic cancers in 2015 and 2017. This contains the records of 72% of newly diagnosed cancer cases in the U.S. The only issue I have with that is the medical advancements between 2015 and 2017 and 2023 grow exponentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially in the cancer world. Right. And so you have these advancements in, in medicine and you have drug trials and so, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I know they're probably taking that into effect when they, when they build this database, but at the same time, you know, you've got, you've got these trials going on. Um, AI can't take into effect a person's will to live, their genetic makeup, uh, family history, uh, things like that. So to say, well, based on these statistics and the history of the world, we think you have six months. It, it, I don't like 
like it because they're using like a general thing because I know someone that from the moment they were diagnosed with lung cancer three months later they passed away and then I know someone that like my mother-in-law who's had breast cancer three times and survived yeah yeah you know um I know someone that had lung cancer and they've had it for 10 years you know what I mean like like you said there's a will there's the medical and and the advancements going through this cancer research is one of the leading researchers in the medical field, you know? Right. So that means that this AI is constantly having to update itself. So what does it do? Does it get new information, call you on the phone, go, hey, I told you six months, but due to our new calculations, <laughs> it's nine months now. Congratulations, you won three months. You know, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and they lead you around by the nose then. Exactly. So then you're yeah. just waiting by your phone for some AI machine to call you and give you an extra couple months. Like, screw that. Right. And and if you have a healthy attitude about it, and I think it's hard to when you're given devastating news. I think for a lot of people it is. Mm-hmm. But I think if you have an, a, a healthy attitude about it, you just say, you know what? I don't pick the day I go. Exactly. I, I never will. So for today, all I have is today. And for right now, I'm going to, you, you live until you die. You, you have the, the best possible day you have. Uh, you go out, you enjoy your day. You go out and, and tell the people you love, you love them while you can. And, and you, you go out and try to make an impact in the world where you can. And, you know, to hell with any, anything, anything else and anybody else who, who doesn't uh, see things your way. I mean, and all those things they're saying that it's supposed to help you with the the planning for your funeral and what to do in the future and getting all ready. Once you're diagnosed with something like that, you should kind of take that route anyways. Sure. Not not in a bleak way, not in a this depressing way, but just a preparation way. Yeah, just be prepared. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like I said, we're going through that right now because I'm getting older and all that, and it's I'm not planning on going anywhere. But ever since you know. Jamin was taken from us so quickly. It's like, oh, we need to get this stuff in line. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you're right. It, you you get to a point in life, and and you don't. It, there's not a magic mark in your life. You know, you don't hit forty, or you don't hit fifty, or or, or whatever, and you decide, oh, well, people are dropping around me. I I, I got to hit that. You know, I, I got to start doing something. There's just an internal clock that goes off, and mm-hmm. you go, no, you know what? Maybe it's time. Yep, and you do it. You know, I know, I know some older adults who live like they're 20 and, and, (laughs) and don't want to, don't want to face that. And I know some younger adults who live like they're 80 and, and already have all that stuff planned out. So, um, yeah, you just, it's, it's all, it's all individual. Yeah, I agree. It it really is. Uh, let's move on. Let's, let's talk. uh, Oh, first of all, uh, I'll let you choose the adventure here, Bruiser. Okay. You want to talk Velisca Axe House or do you want to do uh, Parisher? Let's do Parisher first and then let's do the Axe House. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let me grab uh, Let me grab the Parisher here. All right. Just because it's been a while since we've had Parisher and I want to hear from our listeners. Okay. Let's uh, let's grab this one from Marky Mark who, uh, who wrote in. He says, hello again, guys. With Halloween here, I thought I'd uh, chime in or chime back in with another Parisher. Uh, people haven't been forthcoming with many lately. He gives you all the guilt trip. <laughs> As he should. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And I'd hate spooky time to pass without any. Well, thank you, Mark. We appreciate that. Uh, before I get into it, though, I wanted to answer you about the question you posed to me last month. Oh, I had written in reference to my previous parish here about the girls being chased by a blue orb and how you had reported Dr. Stephen Greer had said that blue orbs were known to cure hearing loss. Okay. You had asked if the girl had ever seen the orb again or been cured of her hearing loss. The truth is, shortly after the encounter, she underwent cochlear implant surgery to repair her hearing. The procedure implants a magnet in the head, which renders all the biological auditory equipment in your head permanently inoperable. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, So I guess we'll never know what would have happened. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, it's good that she can hear through the equipment. Right. Right? So there's a blessing there. There's a blessing there, Mark. But I I get what you're saying. There you go. 
It did get me thinking, though, he says. I know you're always looking for good guests, so maybe you could get Dr. Greer back on the show. That is a good suggestion, and, and we'll look into doing that and get his opinion. We'll do that, Mark. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's been several years since he's been on. Communication with other intelligences seems like a fascinating subject to me. Well, we'll do that. We'll uh, reach out to Dr. Greer, see if we can get him back on. Now on with the parish here. Well, thank you, Mark, for, <laughs> for directing that. We appreciate that as well. Uh, this story is to elaborate more on the very first story I wrote in about. In that story, my then teenage mother had seen what I suppose would be referred to as the hat man slinking towards her bed at night shortly after she fell ill with MS. I decided to ask her if she had seen anything else in that old house of my grandma's. She told me of another time where she had woken up to see the figure of a portly lady uh, wearing a long sleeveless dress or muumu standing at the end of her bed. I also had a strange experience in this house. When I was much younger, I had won tickets to a music festival. The show was over two hours from my house, but much closer to my grandma's house. Being a two-day festival, my grandma volunteered that I, along with my friend and his girlfriend, could stay at her house the night between festival days. That night, we got to my grandma's house late, and it was decided that I would take a bedroom on the main floor, and the other two would just sleep in the basement on a pull-out couch. To this day, I'm not sure why they didn't just sleep in another bedroom, but that's why they, but that's what they chose. In the morning, I met my friend at the breakfast table where my grandma had so thoughtfully went all out with a traditional breakfast of bacon and eggs. We ate and talked while his girlfriend was upstairs on the second floor showering and getting ready for the day. The second floor was incidentally where the apparitions had been seen many years earlier. I think okay. I know where this is going. I think so, too. I think we're about to get an appearance from the girlfriend. <laughs> there you go. Uh, my friend said to me, what were you doing in the back room last night? In the basement on the far side of the room where they were sleeping was a doorway that opened into an old laundry room. This room also contained a walled up old cistern. I told him I hadn't been down there or would have had any reason to go down there. He said they had heard loud banging in that room, which went on for a good portion of the night. I don't think it was them either. I'm just saying. That's just my, <laughs> old, my own side note. Uh, I know it's an old house and subject to strange noises, but I had slept down there many a summer while visiting and never heard anything like that. After a few minutes, his girlfriend came downstairs. Ha ha, very funny, guys, she said. Then she saw her confused looks. Oh, wait. Were you guys upstairs? We assured her we had been sitting at the breakfast table the whole time. According to her, as she was brushing her hair, she had seen the bathroom doorknob jiggle back and forth a few times. When she went to leave, the knob would not turn at all. It was like someone was holding it from the other side. She waited a minute and tried the knob again. This time, it opened with no problem. Later, while sitting in the TV room at the bottom of the wooden staircase leading to the second floor, we heard what sounded like loud footsteps walking around the hallways above us. I turned to my grandma and said, are you hearing that? Do you hear things like that often? She goes, oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> like it's nothing. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just our friendly ghost. You're yeah. good. <sighs> Aren't you scared to live here by yourself? I asked. And grandma repli replied, no. I just tell myself it's the house settling. If I thought it was anything else, I'd probably have to move out of here right away. <laughs> Good old Gran. <laughs> Great answer, Grandma. That's right. Well, that's it for this week. Have a spooky Halloween, and I'll talk to you next time. Marky Mark. That's a great story. I, his grandma seems like a cool person. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's the house settling. But Grandma yeah. about ghosts. Nope, can't say that. Nope. Can't say that or I'm moving. That's right. Or <laughs> Grandma's out of here. That's right. Great story there, Mark. We appreciate yeah. it so much. And again, if you have a story for Parish Air, you can email us just like Mark did, uh, Tim at darknessradio.com. Or if you want to leave us a voice note, you can do so by going to darknessradioshow.com, clicking on that blue button on the right-hand side. You have two minutes to leave us a voice note. If you need more time, just click on the blue button again. Tell us it's part two. Leave us another two-minute voice note, and so on, and so on, and so on, until you get that story out. So there you go. Uh, Bruiser, guess what? 
Well, oh, this is the, the murder house. That's the axe right. House. The Velisca Axe House evidently was up for sale. Nobody told me. Nobody told me either. I would have bought it. That's right. But evidently, U.S. Ghost Adventures, not not Zach and the crew, but the... No, it's, they own the Lizzie Borden House, don't they? That's right. They own the Lizzie Borden House, and they also own uh, what other property, the Brick House Inn in Gettysburg. Okay. Uh, they have now purchased the Velisca Axe House. Okay, so they're trying to make a little small empire is what they're trying to do. They do have a, a little small empire. They they run ghost tours in different cities. Okay. And as a matter of fact, my friend, if you'd like to uh if you'd like to go for a little overnight, we've been invited. Oh, yes, I would. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, U.S. Ghost Adventures, known for its entertaining, historic, and authentic ghost tours and overnight stays in America's most haunted cities and houses, is under contract to buy the infamous historic Velisca Axe Murder House in Velisca, Iowa. This marks the company's third historic and haunted location available for tours and overnight stays. U.S. Ghost Adventures currently operates another murder house, the Lizzie Borden Axe House. Or I'm, I'm, yes, the Lizzie Borden House. It's not called the Axe House, but the Lizzie Borden House. <laughs> and Brick House Inn in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. All are recognized as some of the most haunted homes in the U.S. The Velisca Axe murders remain an unsettling enigma in American history. In this quaint Iowa town, eight suspe- unsuspecting victims, including six children, were bludgeoned to death as they slept. Despite a nationwide manhunt, multiple suspects and trials the uh, murders remain unsolved. In the 1990s, the home was painstakingly restored by Martha and Gavin Lynn at great expense and effort into a living museum so visitors could experience the home the way it was on the night of the crime, right down to the lack of electricity and running water. Thanks to their dedication, the Josiah B. Moore House is on the National Registry of Historic Places. Since the Lynns opened the house up to the public, Over 25 years ago, visitors have reported hundreds of unexplained experiences from the sounds of footsteps, children's voices, and moving objects. Using sensitive ghost hunting equipment, researchers have documented a range of phenomena and evidence of unexplained activity, including electronic voices, ghostly images, and physical encounters not readily explained. These encounters, along with historical significance of the crimes, draw visitors from around the world to experience the power of the house for themselves. The quote here from Johnny Hauser, who has served as general manager of the Velisca Axe Murder House for 20 years, says that the house seems to haunt itself as its own entity. From my own experiences to what the guests have shared, It takes a personal approach to its mental manipulation and mirrors back to guests the inner workings of their own personal lives. He also went on to say it's unsettling what it has revealed to people. And if the victims are haunting the house, there is something much darker over it. Online booking for overnight stays and house tours are now available for 2024 for the first time. For travelers' convenience, self-guided tours using a mobile app will be available as well. Uh, there's also a quote here from Lance Zoll, who is the president and founder of U.S. Ghost Adventures. He says that I have tremendous respect for Martha Lynn and her late husband, Darwin, who are the ones who opened the Velisca home for to the public to learn more about the horrific tragedy in Velisca and honor the victims. He says, I'm looking forward to serving as steward of America's history and legacy the Lynns have built Uh, We serve the public or will serve the public that wants to learn about the story of these victims who never got the justice they deserved while supporting the ghost hunter community. Uh, Again, if you want to uh, take a look and see what's going on with America's most haunted locations, including the Lizzie Borden House, the Velisca Axe House, and others, you just go to usghostadventures.com and you can check that out for more. It's one of my favorite places to investigate. Um, and for any true crime fans out there, I recommend highly going into the murders, like the and, and all the courts and the investigation. It's a fascinating, fascinating tale. It's sad what happened to the children, but just because this was done before there was forensic science, this was done before DNA, all that. You know what I mean? And just how they go about it, and then. For the paranormal fans, it's a great place to investigate. Um, yeah. In fact, when Ring of Honor. Before it got sold, we were 
uh, Manny Leone and I are trying to come up with um, like taking wrestlers with us and filming, you know, investigations and then putting it on the Ring of Honor YouTube page. Mm-hmm. And we actually were lining up the first house was going to be the uh, the Axe House, and then COVID hit. Oh yeah, and it yeah. you know that just that changed everything. But I was I pushed real hard, and the the office got a hold of them, and they made all the arrangements, and then boom, we were. You know, because I, I knew right away, I'm like, well, you want something fun and exciting with a great backstory. This is the house to do it in. That's right. That's right. You're absolutely right. So, yeah. Uh, so, Felisca Axe House has now been sold to U.S. Ghost Adventures. And uh, they're I'm glad they're keeping for... it open for investigating, though. Yeah, that that absolutely. makes me happy. Absolutely. And uh, U.S. Ghost Adventures runs a lot of tours, and you'd be surprised how many are, are probably available in your city. I know that uh, they opened up um tours i believe in minneapolis recently so okay yeah so there's a there's a new tour uh here in minneapolis so uh just check out usghostadventures.com to see if there's a tour in your area nice so there you go we'll move on here a mom living in a haunted house reaches out to a previous owner and gets an eerie response we got this story from a few of our listeners (laughs) okay (laughs) yeah um kind of was it was that the owner was dead and they answered the phone (laughs) it's kind of an interesting story let me tell you about it okay uh a woman living in a haunted 1920s new mexico home says her cat and son see a haunting presence okay i i believe that pets the veil's thinner for pets and for children right Renee Valdez says her son told her about a man that I see in my room with an old hat that peeks in from the bathroom. She told that to Inside Edition. Of course, when you want to tell somebody that you've got a haunting, Inside Edition is probably the first place I would go. I didn't even know that was still on the air. <laughs> no, you didn't? No, I, I ranked that up there with the current affair. Remember when it was always Inside Edition and then the current <laughs> affair? Like, I thought those went to the wayside years ago. Not Inside Edition. No, they're still on. I think, what are they on? They're on at like 3 or 3.30 here in the Minneapolis market. Okay. So, so they moved and they're not prime time anymore. Okay. No, it's like middle of the afternoon. Um but I just remember Thursday nights back home in the nineties, it was inside edition followed by a current affair. <laughs> That's right. Have you ever have you ever seen any of the um any of the documentaries on a current affair and what happened to their demise? No. Oh my god, it's the most interesting show ever. So I just look up a current affair documentary and it should come out? Yeah, you should find something. Yeah. Okay. But some of the some of the trashiest journalists ever. Now, I, I may offend some people if I tell them where they ended up. <laughs> Let's just say some of the trashiest journalists ever crossed over to a certain mainstream news organization. I'll put it that way. Okay. And started a certain mainstream news organization. Which is currently on the air, I take it? Yes, yes. It's currently operating. Yeah. <laughs> They have a big website and yeah, two or three a, shows. Yeah, there's there's yeah. some popular shows that are on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they yeah, and some of the some of the things that a current affair did um are just completely unscrupulous. I'm I'm definitely I love watching stuff like that, especially when it's nostalgic stuff. Oh, you know? oh god. And and this I, I'll I'll see if I can find the link for you. It, it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. It's got to be because I I think I watched it. It wasn't. It was either on Vice or it was on. No no no. You know what? It might have been one of those. I think it was on Vice because I think it was one of those two thousand programs, or it might have been either on CNN or on Vice, one or the other. Oh, um, I got the Vice app now. So there you go. Maybe look yeah. it up on Vice. I think it was. Let me see what it says online here. Yeah. Because it was uh, the the whole background of a current affair is just it's seedy. I mean, it's really seedy. Uh, it's on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. Check it out later when you get a chance. Um, but yeah, Inside Edition is. Yeah, it says Vice presents the Vice is the one that did the documentary. Okay, yeah. It's it, called Close Up, the Current Affairs documentary. Inside Edition appears in that documentary. The war that Inside Edition and A Current Affair had is legendary. You'll see it in that documentary. Because it was, I just I remember that as a kid. It was always Inside Edition followed by Current Affair. 
I just remember, mm-hmm. doo, doo, you know, the, the music. Even though they, they typically aired back to back in most most markets. Yeah. They hated each other. Oh, I, I bet. They were at war with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the dirty stuff they did to each other is in that documentary. It's pretty <laughs> salacious. Anyway. So, so this lady decided to go to Inside Edition to report yes. her haunted house. Yes. Renee <laughs> She's Valen- like, screw, I wanted to go to Current Affair, but they're not around anymore. That's so right. Inside yeah. Edition, you get well, it. <laughs> a Current Affair would have paid her for her story. Oh, yeah. They paid everybody. Yeah. Uh, Renee Valdez said her son told her about a man that I see in my room with an old hat that peeks in from the bathroom. She told that to Inside Edition. Uh, Valdez reportedly spoke to the previous owner on Facebook who said, oh, I've been expecting you. (laughs) Oh, that's never good. Uh, No, it's not. She's like, my son sees a man with a hat and her son described what our son sees. So that was weird and scared the crap out of me, Valdez told Inside Edition. Again, with the telling Inside Edition. Uh, Valdez described a list of unusual noises and unexplained stuff that she and her girlfriend hear daily. Oh, wonderful. There is an unconnected doorbell that violently dings at night, a basement camera that caught the chairs sliding across the floor, and an A-L-E-X-A device alerting them about calls ringing from inside the house. (laughs) The calls from inside the house. If I was the the previous owner, I'd rib them, like joke with them and go, oh, so you haven't seen the bloody handprints anywhere yet? (laughs) The what? (laughs) (laughs) Of course, you know, I can't say what it is because I have one sitting next to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which we know works because you had that experience with your buddy there. Yeah. With the creepy music. And then when you try to bring it up live here on the air. Yeah. It, it did it again. Yeah. <laughs> so I firmly believe that the ALEXA can be manipulated. Yeah. That's just, yeah. And and we had the, the story not too long after that about the ALEXA and ghosts being able to manipulate it. Yep. Yeah, interesting. Uh, however, what freaks her out is her pe- her pets' responses. The pets have the most reaction, said Valdez, who specifically mentioned her gray cat, Ruth. Ruth sees things in the bedroom constantly. And I mean, they interrupt her. It follows her. It modes around, she said. Of course, Valdez told Inside Edition this. Evidently, Inside Edition paid for the story. I have no idea why they get so many mentions. Uh, I mean, she's always seeing it, and that freaks me out, Renee went on to say. I don't like her reactions because her ears go back. She is definitely following something that's up there. Valdez, her girlfriend, her son, and the pets still live in the house and plan to stay there with their shadowy roommate. I feel like I'm... She said, I feel like I'm in its space more than it's in mine in a way, Valdez said. Whatever it is, is here before us. They're not bothering me, so I'm going to let it go. I kind of love him, she said. Ooh. Like, in his own way, he's like the icing on the cake of this creepy 1920s house that I bought. That's a weird statement to say. Very weird, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to have a story about her marrying that ghost. Yeah. That's an odd statement. That's a very odd. Like, I, I, she should have said, oh, it being haunted adds to the house. Yeah. Not, add, or, I kind of like them. It you know, adds, like, ooh. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it adds to the charm. Would, yeah. Would be the, st- like, the appropriate statement. Like, she pretty much just said, this sexy-ass ghost lives in my house. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll be in my negligee at nine. Yeah. My girlfriend and I love when he visits. Right? Yeah. We're hoping to complete the threesome soon. (laughs) It's just a weird statement. So weird. Bizarre. Let's uh, tell you a little bit about the Legend of Bloodwood. The tree that bleeds when it's cut. This is exciting. Yeah, kind of weird. Kind of a weird legend. Terracarpus anglenesis. 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 Uh, Commonly known as wild teak or bloodwood, 
is a species of tree native to southern Africa, known primarily for the dark red sap it secretes, which looks like blood when the tree is cut. It's well known in tropical Africa, where it is used to make high quality furniture and musical instruments. Wild teak is resistant to termites and has a nice spicy fragrance. It is also resistant to fire, so trees are sometimes planted around structures that need to be protected from flames. But outside of southern Africa, bloodwood is most known for its unique dark red sap. It resemble, its resemblance to blood has made some people speculate about the tree's magical healing powers and blood illnesses, none of which have been proven by conventional medicine. Oh, Bruiser, i got to show you this picture. Imagine... <laughs> You cut this tree down and you see this. Oh, isn't that freaky? That is that that does look like blood. Holy cow! Doesn't it? I I would be like, okay, there's a human in there, or an animal or something, right? In you, this, you know, you would think that a human had been turned into a tree. Okay, this is even more freaky. You're in the woods, you're cutting a tree, and you see that. Oh, isn't that bizarre? Yeah, because it looks like a normal tree. Yeah. That, wow, they're not kidding. That sap looks like blood. It does. It looks, it almost, it looks like a cross between stage blood and real blood. It's, yeah. Looking at photos of cut Terra Carpus, P-T-E-R-O-C-A-R-P-U-S. Go ahead and, and, and Google it while we're talking here. Looking at photos of cut Terra Carpus, Angolensis, so A N G O L E N S I S. Google and just it. Keep in mind, it's sap. It's not blood. Google right. it. Yeah. yeah, listeners, definitely Google it. Yeah. it is. It is a sight to see. So, Terracarpus angolensis trees. I wonder if we can use that sap to make like syrup and make like a blood syrup. Oh. That would be so cool. And make bloody pancakes. Exactly. Yeah, for like Halloween breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to see why the name Bloodwood comes or why where it comes from. The oozing red sap makes it seem like the cut trunks are actually bleeding, but that is no blood, just tannin rich sap. Most plants have parts, leaves in particular, that contain between twelve and twenty percent tannins. In comparison, bloodwood sap is seventy seven percent tannins. Okay. Interesting. It's tannins that give the sap, the wild teak, its blood-like color, but they have another purpose. Their astringent taste makes animals foolish enough to try to consume it, think it. That doesn't make sense. Their astringent taste makes animals foolish enough to try to consume it, think again, it says. And if the taste is not enough to convince them, tannins' ability to bind to nutrients like proteins prevents animals from properly digesting food. Oh, so okay, you can't. Okay, so you can't. Make, you no. can't eat it. It's not edible. Okay. Yeah. So technically, the blood-like sap of bloodwood is a tree's natural defense mechanism. Interesting. Yeah. The wood oh, I'd run away. <laughs> yeah. The wood of Terracarpus angolensis lensis, uh, has plenty of uses, but its weird sap isn't useless either. Apart from its controversial use in alternative medicine as a cure for various diseases of the blood, it can be used as a dye. And some people mix it with animal fat to create a sort of cosmetic ointment. Okay. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, there's, uh, it doesn't look like there's more to the story. I thought there was more to the story. But that's it. I highly encourage listeners to go look at that tree up. That those are some cool pictures. It looks like while they were cutting it, the guy lost his arm while cutting the tree. <laughs> you know, like, oh no, I cut my own arm off. There's blood all over the tree. Yeah, there's a little video here of a guy. Let me see if I can do this without bringing up sound. Uh, let's see here. I'll try and do this without bringing up sound here, Bruce. Let's see. Here's a guy cutting into it. Isn't that interesting? You can, oh my gosh. Yeah. It does look like it's bleeding. Like right when he cut, it looks like it's blood. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks like something out of a horror movie. Oh my gosh, it's coming up the chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, isn't that It cool? looks like he's cutting a human, that is, that is definitely spooky. Isn't it? 
I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to post this article up on in the description of this program so you can see this guy cutting into this log with a chainsaw. Yeah, at first it's it's over now, but at first yeah. it, it just looks like he's doing the normal cut, and then when he hits the sap, it looks like he's dismembering a body. Yeah, like that's how much sap is there. It looks like it's the spilling blood. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bizarre, boy. I tell you. Yeah, that's something. Oh, doctor. That's something. Can you imagine if he got pulled over on his way home with that bloody, with that sap filled chainsaw on the back, his yeah. pants covered because he was, he was covered in it. Yeah. Yeah. And having to explain to the sheriff, like, no, this isn't human blood. This is a I'm, tree that I cut down. <laughs> I'm just harvesting bloodwood out in the forest. And they're like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, dude. Happy Halloween to you too. Mm -hmm. Come on. We're testing your clothes. We're going to need you to come in. Yep. Yeah. Let's move on. The world's most haunted airport, no, it's not Denver, is built on cemetery and it leaves passengers spooked. We're going to Bangkok. It's an oriental city. <laughs> I don't know if you know that or not. It's... Why Why would they build it on a cemetery? Come on, guys. Let's see if I, I know can... there's not a lot of room in Bangkok, but come on. That's true. Let's see if I can uh, stick the landing on this one. Uh, Suvar see what you did there. It's an airport. Yeah, stick the landing. <laughs> Suvarnabhumi Airport in the Thai capital of Bangkok. I, th I think I got that one. Has long been associated with ghosts after officials decided to build it on the location of an ancient graveyard. <laughs> like I said, I know they're running out of space, but come on. <laughs> an airport is said to be built on a graveyard and it's been left it's left some passengers spooked to the core thai culture has a long and deep appreciation of the ghoulish and supernatural this reputation as fans of the spiritual realm is one many visitors will encounter when they pass through bangkok's suvarnab humi airport that is a hard word to say when you see it on the page <laughs> Most letters from that area are. Yeah. Uh, before the airport was built, marshland outside of the city had to be drained to make way for it. A swampy graveyard. My worst my worst nightmare. <laughs> so New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. Yeah. Uh, although they do have uh they do have mausoleums in, in New Orleans. They do, they do, but they still they, break and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, some locals warned that the chosen area called Cobra Swamp. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, so let me guess. There's a lot of uh, koala bears there. Yes. There's a lot of cute little uh, sloths and <laughs> things like that there. Uh, was once the site of an ancient cemetery. Cobra Swamp. Yay. Uh, as well as construction delays and costs that quickly spiraled out of hands, those in charge of the project had another problem on their hands as they started building there. Workers reported that something didn't quite feel right on the site, Bruiser. <laughs> you think? And then some started seeing the Blue Man. Here we go. <laughs> like the Blue Man Group? <laughs> yes, the Blue Man Group showed up and they played a set and it scared the hell out of everybody because it's the Blue Man Group. You ever seen the Blue Man Group in concert? No, Mrs. Bruiser has a couple times and she keeps saying that we need to see him. I guess they're good. Don't, don't, don't go. No, you don't like it? No. Don't waste your money. <laughs> She's a big fan, so. Is she? Uh, yeah. I suppose you're going to get dragged into that tonight for the birthday, aren't you? <laughs> you end up watching it on video. It's going to be the worst. Probably. Worst two hours of your life, I'm sure. Anyways, uh, I, I digress. Um, so the blue man is out there and why they're trying to work. In 2006, a Sean Now reported that um, workers had seen a an unquiet spirit. <laughs> what the hell does that look like? He's just walking around going, la, 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 la. <laughs> Doing that and singing the Macarena. Aye. Yep. <laughs> Aye. Uh, an unquiet spirit with a blue face and frail old man's body walking around the 2.1 billion pound project. Jeez. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. At the time, squadron leading... I'm sorry, squadron leader Panu Pong, a former commando who heads a staff of 1,000 airport security personnel, 
said, I believe in this phenomenon. I have seen many ghosts in my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Panu Pong is out there with a thousand security troops. And he goes, you... oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. He, he's standing out there. He's got a thousand security troops and goes, big old blue man, screw it. We're <laughs> going working. home. Yep, we're going home. Nope, nope, nope. Not dealing with the big old blue man. Because he, <laughs> all he does is stand around and do what, Bruiser? Do the voice again. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not dealing with that. <laughs> and we're out. Fold it up, boys. We're going in for tea. <laughs> a year earlier, the airport's opening had fallen flat when only two planes took off at the grand unveiling ceremony. <laughs> what a grand unveiling it is. Yeah, just two planes, no more. Uh, before 12 months more work was carried out, before the airport could officially be unveiled again, an unusually high number of accidents began befalling staff. <laughs> And the guy was like, told you so. Yep. Old Panaprog or whatever his name was is out there <laughs> making a bunch of noise and pushing people over. He's like, I told you so. Yep. Uh, two airport workers would die in car accidents. Strange footsteps were heard through around the airport at night, as well as traditional music which was played by the ghost, I suppose, the Blue Man Group. <laughs> the Blue Man Group. Blue Man called the Blue Man Group to come out and play for the – because they only had two planes take off from the airport. So they're like, hey, I can save this. Blue Man's like, I got this. Let me call my buddies. Yep. They'll come on out. They'll play a set. Yep. They ended up playing a bunch of polka, I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, there was no apparent source to that traditional music, by the way. It just came out of nowhere. Okay. Yeah. Squadron leader – Panapong, or Panaprog, whatever you want to call them. Pan Panaprog, by the way, is the festival out at Lakeville every year. Okay. Lakeville, Minnesota. So I just call him Panaprog. Uh, said he was lucky to escape with his life after swerving to avoid when a curiously dressed woman holding a baby walked in front of his car only to suddenly disappear. That would be terrifying. Wouldn't it, though? Prathit Wamuda, a guard, was one of those who claimed to have seen the old man. He had an aura around his head and walked with a stick. I called out to him, but then he was gone. I was so scared that I forgot to ask him for next week's winning lottery numbers. What? <laughs> he told his son now, like he would give them to you. What? What is that? <laughs> like... Hey, you know the Blue Man Group, so I'm assuming you know the lottery numbers. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, and can you sing them to me? Why uh, is that the thing that goes through your head when you see a ghost? Like, oh, shoot. Powerball's <laughs> next week. I should have asked him. That's the last thing I'm asking a ghost. Me too. There's never been an EVP session where I went, <gasps> what are the numbers for next week's Powerball drawing? I'm totally, we should. I'm totally doing that from now on. <laughs> what are the Powerball numbers for next week? Yes. What are the Powerball numbers for Friday? <laughs> I'm sorry, Saturday. Friday is Mega Millions. Uh, not wanting the second grand unveiling to fall flat or fall as flat as the first, 99 monks were called in to exercise the airport of any potential demons. They prayed at the climax of nine weeks of exorcism and, and rites the day before the travel hub was declared fit for flying. As they did... An elderly man who claimed to be called you can't, you can't you can't make this up. Okay. As they did, an elderly name an elderly man who claimed to be called Pu Ming. <laughs> the same name given to the blue faced ghost appeared appeared and staggered toward the monks. They doused him with holy water and dunked him over the head. Seemingly bringing the <laughs> perturbed figure back to his senses. And then his son, Pooping, came and was like, what are you guys doing beating up my dad? <laughs> yeah. Listen, you leave Pooping alone. Pooping says so. <laughs> By the way, I could use some of that water. I'm having a hard time sliding around. <laughs> Stop hitting him. <laughs> I just see a bunch of bugs like, get off. Our airport. <laughs> Get off our airport. 
Here's some water. Slide off our tarmac. <laughs> as effective as the actions of the quick-thinking monks seem to have been at the time, rumors of haunted happenings at the airport continue to this day. Every now and again, passengers say they've seen the blue specter wandering around the terminals with his walking stick. It's because there's still dead bodies there. Yeah, they didn't move the bodies. <laughs> Several other people have claimed to see a ghostly lady carrying a baby. That's pooping. That's pooping, yeah. Yeah, that's pooping. Yeah. Yeah. While reports of strange, unexplainable sounds in the ground by both airport workers and passengers are not uncommon. In 2013, an aircraft lost control and skidded off the runway at the airport during landing in 2013. They got a hold of some of that (laughs) poo-poo. In October of 2018, an inbound plane lost control and slid off the runway. Both because it's built on a swamp. <laughs> this is yeah, nothing right. to do with supernatural it's stuff. All, it's all algae. It's built on a swamp. <laughs> yeah. But both were blamed on ghosts, Bruiser. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. That's that story. They're blaming it on ghosts, Bruiser. N- <laughs> not the fact that it's built on a swamp. Can't. And the fact that there was a cemetery in the swamp, that's terrifying, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, buddy, uh, Chief, what do we do with these bodies? Uh, throw them in the swamp, alligators will eat them. <laughs> uh, Shall we give them a proper burial? Oh, yeah, we'll call it a cemetery. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you, uh, what do you think the first sound is when the plane lands? Is it the dead in the cemetery going oh <laughs> that's the strange sounds they're hearing from the yeah from the ground or do you think it's the alligators screaming when their back gets broken <laughs> i think it's the dead going oh. oh bizarre all right uh moving on to haunted dolls all right yeah Got an interesting story here about uh, a haunted doll with a demonic voice and the power to suck energy. Oh, geez, that's terrifying. <laughs> terrifying, but to some weirdos out there, kind of sexy. They're like, ooh, this doll sucks, huh? Right. Sucks the energy out of you, does it? Uh, this unnamed doll is believed to have a male demon living inside of it. <laughs> Yes, it does. It's super. I'm a demon. (laughs) Coming to get you. Gonna suck the energy out of you. And almost took control of a little girl in Texas who spoke about killing her father and brother before a priest intervened. Oh, geez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You might want to get someone to intervene. Yeah, I think so. With Halloween just around the corner, there's no better time to invest your own in your own very own possessed. Oh, my God. No, don't. Don't (laughs) do that. Even though this news story says go ahead and invest in your own very own possessed doll. Don't do that. Yeah, because look what's going on here. The girl wanted to kill her brother and father. (laughs) Yeah. It says, go ahead and invest in your very own possessed doll to entertain guests while bobbing for apples. I say probably leave it at home. Yeah. I can see it. Come to my Halloween party. One of you is going home possessed. (laughs) (laughs) One's going home possessed. The other is drowning while bobbing for apples. (laughs) Hey, man, what's your doll doing with this? Hey, And while murderous toys are a popular trope in horror movies, lots of them stem from alleged real-life incidents. Go figure. Films such as Annabelle and Chucky are actually based on two apparently possessed dolls that have both become the stuff of legends. Of course, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who studied the occult and uh, collated an extensive collection of items believed to be cursed, kept Annabelle in a glass case until their museum was closed. Actually, Annabelle's still in that case. And still at, at the museum. Annabelle never went anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. They still have that at the museum. It was believed that she was so j- dangerous that the couple had a priest come in once a week and still does to bless the area where she sat with holy water and prayers. There's also Robert the doll, 
who is said to have inspired the murderous character Chucky from the film franchise Child's Play. Currently on display along with his teddy bear at East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, two paranormal investigators, if you want to call them that, recently were <laughs> boneheads and shared their own experiences with the demon doll. Was that the blood ceremony douchebags? Yeah, that was the yeah, blood, those blood idiots. ceremony douchebags. Kalani Smith and his pal Josh claim they were attacked after a blood ritual was performed, recalling it felt like we caught on fire. And Duh. probably should have been. Um, now paranormal enthusiasts can st- uh, star in their very own horror film by purchasing their very own haunted dolly. Featured on the bidding platform eBay, an unnamed figurine can be bought for a reasonable price of just 75 pounds. Oh, that's it, huh? Yeah, that's it. I'm in. Uh, Claiming it is possessed by a male demon, the seller states that it arrived from Texas last year. While in their possession, it spoke at least once. In the description, it states, We claim ownership of this doll and the priest from Texas who delivered her to us by hand, he begged that someone needed to take ownership of her to break the curse that was attached to his daughter. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? I don't know. That's weird. Uh, According to the seller, the priest's daughter, first of all, priests don't have daughters, but okay. (laughs) If they do, they're excommunicated from the church. Uh, there's already a problem with this story. The priest's daughter bought the doll from a yard sale, but within months, she started having extreme hysterical episodes and spoke with a different language. The little girl spoke about killing her father and younger brother and taking them to hell with her. Oh, well, oh. family vacation. Yeah. yeah, at least she's thinking about them. Yeah. Uh, he also <laughs> claimed that bruises appeared on the little girl's skin and her eyes grew dark. They explained the priest attempted an exorcism, and this did not work. He finally reached out, and a medium visited his daughter. There's a lot of problems with this story. There is. Priests don't reach out to mediums. (laughs) You don't think so? No. No. They don't have that connection there? No. Like, the priest is like, hey... Yeah, this is this is haunted. Let me call my medium friend. You know, the occult one. Yeah, they don't do that. Uh, she told the man the child has ownership of something that has been cursed. Only when ownership is handed over can your curse be broken. Yeah, I, I, big problem with this story. Yeah. After the seller took the doll, they began to notice flies and slugs accumulating in rooms with no explanation. They also noticed that if they stayed in the shop for long periods of time, they would start to feel ill and have dark thoughts. In addition to the demonic voice they claim to have recorded, uh, the sellers say they have also captured the doll performing extraordinary manifestations on camera. The seller finished the description by warning prospective buyers, the doll is not a toy. This demon likes to suck all the energy out of a room and will take the take the power from your equipment and your immediate surroundings. We have always kept ourselves blessed and worn crosses when conducting investigations with this doll. Please be prepared to do the same. It also is advised that daily saging and cleansing is recommended. Wait, so cleansing and saging works, but a priest doing an exorcism failed. No, because the priest is with the medium. (laughs) <laughs> sure. This story is so all over the place. Right. Uh, it's also advised that daily saging and cleansing is recommended upon buying the doll, and there would be no returns or refunds. Of course, there's no returns or refunds, Bruiser. No, they just want to get rid of the curse. Yeah. Uh, for any skeptics out there, the sellers have an abundance of positive reviews from buyers who can vouch for the legitimacy of their previous haunted doll sales. <laughs> of course. It's positive reviews on eBay that vouch for this doll, not the fact that, you know, they're actual real experience. <laughs> oh, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. Fall allergies, Bruiser. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of bullshit. I mean, uh, allergies in the air, right? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Let's move on, shall we? Let's. Yeah. Uh, it's been 30 years, 30 years this year since Nightmare Before Christmas was, was released. I believe it. Um, Nirvana's in Euro turns 30. So, and that's not 30 years. 
Time's moving too fast. I'm not a fan of the movie. You don't like Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas? Nope. And it's no? my youngest daughter's favorite movie. But yeah, no, not a fan. No? Huh. What is no. it about it you don't like? I don't know. I just don't care for it. And I and I like Tim Burton. Tim Burton's a great... But I didn't like that. What was the other and uh, stop animation he had? Uh, not Caroline? Is that it? Coraline? Yeah, Coraline. Yeah. Yeah, not a fan of that one either. Okay. Just, I, I couldn't get into them. Hmm. All right. Well... Uh, someone has paid tribute to Nightmare Before Christmas. If you remember the famous, um, uh, the famous picture of Jack Skellington on top of the like little curly Q yep. mountain tree the, mountain thing, tree yeah. mountain thing with the moon in the background. Yep. Yeah. That was the box cover, I believe. Yeah, the box cover. Yes. 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 Yep. Yep. Well, uh, there is a world's largest pumpkin mosaic that's been built really okay yeah to honor that um and it's kind of cool actually a pumpkin farm in england is celebrating the 30th anniversary of the animated film the nightmare before christmas with a mosaic measuring 2081 square feet that's a huge mosaic <laughs> that's bigger than some houses yeah is that a pumpkin or is that just a Different pump. I mean, you have to read the story. I'm wondering if it's one pumpkin or no, 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 pumpkins. no. It's it's multiple. It's it's actually at a farm. I'll show you a picture here. Oh, okay. So they painted the pumpkins. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they carved it like a jack o' lantern. I thought they carved it like a jack o' lantern. No, no, no. Uh, here, let me read on, and I'll tell you here. Yep. Guinness World Records confirms Sunnyfield Farms in Southampton uh, earned the record for the largest curbita. Or I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Kerbita mosaic image when it arranged more than 10,000 pumpkins and squash into the shape of Jack Skellington singing Jack's Lament from the 1993 film. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's what it looks like. I mean, it, yeah. it's a great picture. Yeah. The Nelson family, who owned the farm, said it took a team of five people about 10 hours to arrange the gourds. Really? Yeah. A Guinness World Record educator inspected the mosaic and presented a certificate to farm founders Ian and Louise Nelson and their son, Tom Nelson. So there you go. Interesting little tidbit for you in the Halloween season. Do you think a Guinness Book of World Records still holds what it did back as it did back in the day? I don't think it carries as much weight, but it's interesting. It is. It's cool to be in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Started in a bar. Yeah, yeah. The Guinness Book of World Records started in a bar. Yeah. But it's it's interesting to make a world record i mean you, you have it is it's but there's world records for everything now there is but but it's it's it shows dedication yeah oh yeah you know there's a there's a few of my students that want to break the world record for the longest underwater needlepoint match what is so the longest match 26 hours i believe oh my god uh, it's 26 or 27 hours how much of that is rest holds <laughs> if you go on YouTube, there's a match with Tony Depp and, and I forget the person, but they go 24 hours. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, they tried to break it and they couldn't. I, I would think it'd be almost impossible. I mean, think of the one. Can you imagine trying to watch that? And two, think of the stamina you have to have. Oh, I know. I mean, it's just insane. The, tra the, the amount you have to train. Cardio. Yeah, they asked me to be a part of it, and I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, well, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, because they want to do a multi-man one, so that way you're, it's not one person constantly. Right, right. You got to have run-ins and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it just, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do no. it. No. I'll let you know if they do it. Please do. Please do. Okay, so, now this would be the time in future programs where I play a stinger. Not like Stinger in wrestling. Right. Um, who, by the way, is retiring this year. Yes. A Stinger. Again, again yes. Uh, a stinger, Nobody retires in wrestling. No, that's right. Nobody does. You, you either just stop doing it or you die. That's right. That's right. A Stinger in radio or podcasts is a, a theme and a little bit of an explanation as to what the segment is. Okay. Okay. Our explanation for this segment is Ziggy's Picks, which really is Ziggy and Talia and you and I. 
Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you an explanation as to what Ziggy's Picks is. Now, most people by now would know what Ziggy's Picks is. But evidently, I have to explain this bruiser to a small part of our audience. <laughs> yes, you do, because well, they forget. Why do I have to explain this? And you, you so eloquently put it, some people forget. Or they think it's just you and I sitting back talking sports. Right. No, it's folks. Not. It's not. This is an actual paranormal segment. Yes. And what it is, is, again... During certain times of the year, there's actual news stories about psychic animals making picks like the psychic octopus that made the World Cup picks. So what we did is we said, hey, you know what? Bruiser's got pups at home and we want to see if they're psychic. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a long form experiment. We want to see if, at first it started with Ziggy Star Pup. Yep. We want to see if Ziggy Star Pup can pick NFL games week after week and if animals truly do have psychic abilities. Correct. Right? Yeah, that's that was the premise of the whole segment. That's right. <laughs> it's a paranormal experience, an experiment. And, and we discuss the games because we discuss our picks. If they want, I could bring Ziggy and Talia on, but all you're going to hear is because they have no idea <laughs> what they're talking about. That's right. And as part of an experiment, Bruiser, you and I are the control. Exactly, because we can do the research. We can look into it. We aren't psychic. <laughs> That's right. And and we we actually, like you said, we can do the research. We know what we're doing, supposedly, and we can <laughs> talk. We can talk about the right. Not this week, and we can talk about the games. We can talk about the actual material that we're researching. Yes, that's part of the experiment. Yes, that's and why we're talking fans, about football. And some listeners like it. And like you, like you had said, we could do politics. We could do religion. We could do baseball. We could do soccer. We don't want to do any of that. No. Politics just gets into a fight. Religion gets you into a fight. Baseball's right. fun, but there's too many games for baseball. Right. Now, if I really wanted to piss you off, we could read off all of President Trump's indictments and we could predict <laughs> those. Is he going to slide on that one? Is he going to get indicted on that one? Can you feel the anger rising in you right now? <laughs> Because we can certainly stop picking football and start picking indictments. Yeah. You really want to piss people off? Let's talk about the nine people who are going to be up for Speaker of the House. You want to yeah. talk about that? You want to bring politics into this show? I didn't think so. Yeah. So how about we stick to football? It's an easy thing that we know about. It's easy to get the dogs to pick because all I have to do is hold up the two logos. They choose. <laughs> That's right. Isn't that fun? We're, we're the control because then we can do the research of something we like because we don't want to do research into stuff we don't like because we don't like it. And no, it's not become sports talk radio. No. Unlike one review that recently came in that pissed me off. Let me tell you something about research, okay? You want to hear about research? I don't do much research for Ziggy's Picks. Research is when you sit down and read 500 pages of books per week for paranormal and true crime. That's research. Yes. Not football. Agreed. No. I missed most of the games this week, so I could read 500 pages of books. That's the thing people don't get is we're busy when this is happening. <laughs> like, you're doing that. I'm on the road usually. <laughs> you know, you and I were just talking today about the Monday night game and I was like, I missed it, man. Yeah. I was at I had I had a, a big number of students come to training and my my you know, I have to train them and I didn't get home till midnight. And no football game goes till midnight. <laughs> no, no. And the, <laughs> and the Monday I was night tired game and went to bed. The Monday night game was the only game I saw. Because exactly. I was I was reading Sarah DeVello's book, which is four hundred pages. Yeah. So I don't know what what sports radio you guys are listening to. This is ten minutes at the end of of a of a broadcast. Yeah. 
and and it's and, to show how the puppies. The reason that it, 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 it it's possibility they are psychic is the puppies can't do research, quote unquote. They can't look at stats. They can't watch sports. I mean, they can watch sports center, but they have no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 I can say I can talk to Ziggy till she's till I'm blue in the face about how great the Chiefs are, or not the Chiefs aren't that great this year, but they're still gonna go to the Super Bowl and you know, the Packers are a young team and I can tell her all that. And she's just going to stare at me and wonder when her next treat's coming or when her belly rubs are coming or whatever. Mm -hmm. But whenever I get that envelope out with those, those logos, they get excited because they know, Hey, this is okay. We know this. And And then they wonder why on Sundays (laughs) I'm yelling at the the TV. (laughs) And for a very small amount of the program, very small amount of the program. We might have broken down the minutia of the Green Bay Packers offense. And sure, you hear me yell about Kirk Cousins. It's a fucking bit, people. Yeah. Relax. It's yeah. supposed to be funny. Yeah. Now, yeah sure, is. I'm a little upset right now because I, I've i heard from a few people that are like, oh, I don't think I can ever listen again. It's just, it's it's become Sports Central Radio. Since when? Yeah, I don't know where the Sports Central is coming in. Like you said, it's at tops 10 minutes at the end of the show. It, we cover all the paranormal stuff before that. And we always bring it back to the fact that these are dogs, people. <laughs> I could bring them. Like I said, I could bring them in here. They're not going to be a great interview. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> you hear a lot of sniffing and licking of the microphone. Yeah, that's true. And here's the deal. We've always said it's a psychic experiment. Exactly. It's a psychic. Yeah, every week you say, hey, they have to have, what is it, 80 some percent in order to be. 70. It's 70% according to the Ryan Institute. Okay. Yeah. In order you to say be that psychic. every week you say that. And when you give the breakdown, yep. you always say, according to the Ryan Institute, 70%. And this is where the puppies That's lie. That's right. And, and I give the percentages every week. Yeah. And I tell yeah. you, I tell you guys to go to darknessradioshow.com. You can see the puppies. Picking the picks. Yeah. There's there's components to this. Our social media. I, I posted videos this week on our social yep. media of the Mrs. puppies. Mrs. Bruiser shares them. I share them. That's right. I post them. Yeah. Part of the segment is interactive. So, you guys, I'm asking you to be interactive. Go to the social media. See the, Go to the website. See the puppies making the picks. Our chat room picks it up. Our chat room. Yeah. Goes right along with it. They love. They loved how much you hate Kirk Cousins. <laughs> they love it. Yeah, yeah. They, they also. Want, <laughs> they're also with you. They want to get me a cameo of Kirk Cousins. I know, and uh, you posted the link. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Um. By the way, I I, uh, I have an article about Kirk Cousins that uh, will prove to you that he'll never take anybody anywhere. But. <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. That'll be the only sports rant you'll get today. Sports Central. Um, so with that in mind, from now on, so that people understand what the bit's about, much like when we do Dumb Crime, Stupid Criminals, and you get a theme, you're going to have a theme for Ziggy's Picks, which explains the entire bit and what we're doing. <laughs> okay. So that people understand what it is we're doing. Yes. Because I've been, evidently there's a small part of the audience that doesn't understand what this is. So I'm going to explain, Bruiser, what Ziggy's Picks is. Are okay. you ready? Here it is. I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. In an attempt to prove that animals are psychic, Ziggy's Picks is a segment where two psychic pups will take all the picks or all the NFL games in a week. And they will pick each individual game, the winner of each individual game, as a control for the experiment. Cruiser and Bruiser will also pick those games. And there will be a contest between the pups and the Cruiser and the Bruiser to see who is the most psychic. And then I'm going to put an asterisk in there. Psychic is paranormal. 
This is strictly a paranormal contest, not a sports contest. They could be picking anything. They could be picking apples. They could be picking their butts. They could be picking their noses. They could be picking politics. They could be picking anything. But it just so happens to be the NFL. Please sit back and enjoy Ziggy's Picks. (laughs) And they both do pick their butts. (laughs) Yeah, they do. Now, with that being said... Let's talk oh, about Ziggy Picks. I'm not proud this week. I'm not proud. Talia, I'm proud of Talia. Hey, you're not proud. I, yeah. I shit the bed. The humans shit the bed. The puppies did all right. Yeah, the puppies did great. Here's the deal, folks. Uh, this is what we call in Vegas one of those weeks uh, where Vegas, I think, uh, the fix was in. <laughs> I believe it 100%. And in the Browns-Colts game, if you saw oh my God. the I ending, that. Yeah, yeah, that game was fixed. It had to be. Yeah, that game was fixed. That penalty, at the, which was a penalty. Yes, but uh, the whole sequence up until that penalty. You know what wasn't a fix was that Tampa Bay Philadelphia because <laughs> you would. I was. I had that game on, and you'd message me, and I was. I was doing something else, like you were doing. I was just had it on in the background. Oh yeah, well, they, and you they, you messaged me. They and said, hey, here in Minnesota, the, they switched over from the Lions game. Oh, yeah. Lions! It was the Lions Eagles. I'm sorry, the yeah. Lions Eagles. Not and I, so no, I the Lions, yeah, Eagles and Dolphins were playing. That's okay. So it was the Lions and um, Baltimore. Lions, Baltimore. So yep. I had the Lions, Baltimore game on because uh, I have a couple guys on the um, Ravens on my fantasy team. Mm-hmm. But I was doing something else on my phone or whatever, not really paying attention, kind of like what you were doing. You're reading your book, just kind of glancing up. Yep. And then my phone goes off and it was you. And you're like, hey, they switched the Lions off. I have Tampa Bay now. What's going on? And I'm like, holy shit. So do I. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I keep, I keep, the games on in the background while I'm reading, I do. so yeah. so that it's background I can, noise, yeah, background noise. I can hear scores or whatever, and and what I'll do is I I check like when halftime comes up, I check to see how the pups are doing, how you're doing, how I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Um, so I'm reading Sarah Devello's book, which by the way is very good, Broadway Butterfly. If you haven't checked it out yet, the true crime book, please do. Um, and I'm in the middle of reading the book, and all of a sudden, I they they didn't even announce they were going over. As far as I no, know, they just went over. They just went over to uh, to the Atlanta Tampa Bay game. Yeah, and I was like, "What the hell?" Because I, I mean, in Minneapolis, um, it's you know, if you figure they're going to stay with a division rival, so if and I don't know if the Bears Raiders game was on Fox. Was that a no, CBS game? That was a, no, that was a Fox game. That was a Fox game. Why wouldn't you go to the Bears game? I don't know. Because I know Packers. Packers. See, and, by me, by me, I see them going to Tampa Bay because the Panthers and Tampa are in the same conference. Right. So, in but your, by you, they should have went to the Bears Raiders game. Right. They should have gone Bears Raiders, and and that's that's who we should have got. But we got Tampa Falcons, which was, yeah. I mean, it was a good game. I think they just did like a national. Hey, this is where we're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, I mean, man, they flipped over, and for us to leave a Lions game, that's yeah, that's huge. Uh, even though it was a blowout, I mean, it, it was. They yeah. blew their doors off. I mean, it was it was bad. Mrs. Bruiser was kind of gloating because she was playing our daughter. We have we have a family fantasy football league, mm-hmm. and you know how it is. You talk trash and all that. Well, Mrs. Bruiser, my youngest, are in first. They were tied for first, and they're playing each other. And my youngest has Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Mrs. Bruiser's this is the reason why we're watching game two is she's like, oh, Detroit's defense will be fine. They've been great this whole time. And then Lamar Jackson just decided to become the greatest quarterback of all time on Sunday. I don't know what happened to him, <laughs> but geez. Yeah. And he literally racked up like 30 some points for my youngest. And, and Mrs. Bruiser's like, you have to turn this off. And that's when I use, I said, well, Tim just said they switched by him. Let's see. Oh, look, <laughs> we have Baker Mayfield on our screen yep. now. Are you happy? <laughs> yep. Yep. All of a sudden it was just boom. They just flipped over. Yeah. 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 It was, it was unbelievable. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, it was a weird, weird week. So here's how it breaks down. Um, again, for all the results, if you want to see how each individual pup and each individual uh, human picked. You can go to darknessradio.com and click on Ziggy's picks now. And keep in mind that seventy percent when it comes to the puppies. That's that's the key. Is we want to show you that the puppies 
if they get over 70%, according to that institute, they're psychic. Yep, the Rhine Institute. If you're over 70%, you're psychic. Now, even though, uh, I'll tell you, for a an animal to pick even close to what they're picking right now, I'm still impressed. I am too. I'm still impressed. I will tell you this much. In a week where I don't think even the most experienced gambler is picking anywhere close. I think yeah. everybody pretty much got their clocks cleaned. Everyone I've talked to has. To give you an idea, Bruiser went five and eight this week. I went four and nine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. we both got schooled, right? Oh, yeah. Check this out. Ziggy went seven and six. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> Talia went eight and five. It's insane. She... The early games, I was, I was told this off air, the early games, Mrs. Bruce is keeping track of the dog's stuff. And she goes, Talia, you've gotten almost every single game right in the early games. I'm like, how does that happen? <laughs> Their overall pick percentages went up. Yeah. This week. And, and overall, it, which blows my mind. The... To give you an idea, okay, we've picked 106 games. Now, this is 106 games. Yeah, that stupid octopus does what, 10? 20. 20, <laughs> 20? Over, the, over the, I think it's 20 over the World Cup. Okay. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so for pick percentages, Tally is at a 603 average right now. Jesus. Think about that. 64 and 42. That's a, that's a winning season. That's more than winning. That's yeah, if if that's if, playoffs. If that's a playoff bond season. If you're a baseball team and you're at sixty four and forty two, you're dominating your division. Yeah, you're you're leading your division. You're more than leading. You're you're <laughs> you're way out in front. You're probably leading your division by you know fifteen games. Yeah, at sixty four and forty two. Um, Ziggy's at fifty six and fifty. She's six games over five hundred. She was 56 and what? I'm writing these down. 56 and 50. And it's at, I, I have it on the bottom of the website. Okay. I'll go so there. Everything's on the website. Just because Mrs. Bruiser asks, because she's curious, you know, because this is fun for us. This is fun. It's all on the website. Everything's okay. on the website. I've, I've got, got I've got total pick percentages and everything. Uh, so Ziggy's pick percentage is at 528. As far as humans go, believe it or not, <laughs> Uh, Bruiser leads, Bruiser leads the humans at 584. He's at 62 and 44, which is damn good. But Talia is still kicking your butt. She is. Talia is two games ahead of you right now. Yeah. Uh, I am at 556. I have a 556 pick percentage. I'm at 59 and 47. So, um, that that tells you. I mean, but still, no, I mean, no one's in the quote unquote psychic range. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, well, there's a lot left of the season. So. That's right. There's still a lot of season to go. Yep. But that tells you informed versus quote unquote psychic. There's again, folks, I, I can't stress this enough. These are animals who don't watch sports. They're just yep. given icons. Yep. To pick. The and they're just giving colored logos. That, that uh, and you've heard the million dollar challenge, the million dollar paranormal challenge. And I think for the million dollar par paranormal challenge, I don't remember how many you you have to pick in order to be considered psychic. It used to be in a blind envelope when they gave you a blind envelope. It used mm -hmm. to be three out of ten. Okay. That you had to pick in order to be considered psychic. Now, in order to pick visual, actual visual, it's 7 out of 10, like we're doing. Like you have to pick one or the other and then, right. and then predict the right outcome. It's 7 out of 10. Okay. That's what the Ryan Institute says. But for a blind pick, it's 3 out of 10. Okay. So if you were to put those in envelopes and then tell them to pick one or the other, and then write them down. It has to be three out of ten. Okay. So, 
yeah um but that that's just too hard to do the blind yeah I, it's already hard enough getting them to right <laughs> separated to do but it no 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 know? doing it this way is the perfect way to do it because it's yeah. you know they 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 get not only the visual sense but you know but but a feel you know and it's fun for them that's the thing too when people yeah. watch these videos they're they're having fun yeah yeah because you and I both said, as soon as they're not into it, we're just going to stop it. That's right. The minute and, they're not into it, the segment's over. Yep. And they're having a blast. They yeah. love it. Yeah. So there you go. So that's Ziggy's Picks for this week. Again, you can go to darknessradio.com and the Ziggy's Picks uh, section of the, of the website. And you can check all the information out for yourself for this week. And the overall is on the bottom. There's also two videos there. Uh, Ziggy picking the Jaguar Saints uh, game from this past week and Talia picking the um, Steelers Rams game. And they were both right. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So that's, that is it. That that's, that's on the website. So there you go. Okay. One last story for this week. And then we are through for the week. Halloween is coming up this next yes, week. Yes, it is. Um, next week. Boy, week from today. It came fast. It came fast. That's for sure. Uh, so there's three foods, three candies out there that they're saying you should not give to kids. And uh, it's the on the advice of emergency room specialists about what sweets you should and shouldn't give out to children. Now, Bruiser, you claim you know what they are. Well, now you're saying it's emergency room, so now I'm a little worried. But I, I would say black licorice. Okay. I would say candy corn. Even though I'm a fan of candy corn, um, some people aren't. And then the third one, I'm going to say um, some sort of like hard candy. What what kind of hard candy? Not butterscotch, because I like the butterscotch, but like an old person would have in her purse type thing. So yeah, butterscotch candy, even though I like those too. But Specify why. Why would you Choking not? hazard for the hard candy. Okay, that's good. That's that's good. You're kind of in the right ballpark with that. Okay. Okay. The other one's black licorice. Licorice is disgusting, and some people don't like candy corns. And it's not wrapped. I don't think candy corns wrapped. Well, that's uh, you're kind of you're you're in the ballpark there, um, but but no, the first two no, not at all. Okay. Nothing okay. about that. Nothing about that. The, that third one though, you're in the right ballpark. Okay. So. Emergency room specialist says these are the three that you should uh, you should stay away from. U.S. medical professional may well leave folks feeling a little spooked after advising households to think very carefully about what treats they're planning to dish out to trick or treaters. Clocking in on TikTok, content creator Emily, aka Emergency Room Emily, scrubbed in with her do's and don'ts to ensure the. Sweets don't suddenly become sour, if you know what we mean. She says, do not hand out these candies for Halloween. These are the three worst candies that you could hand out for trick-or-treating based on my experience working in the emergency room. She began before moving on to the first item on her list. The first item, if you're ready, Bruiser, number one is dum-dums. Do you remember okay. the little tiny yep. suckers? Yeah, they get them out at the bank. Yeah, 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 dum-dums. Don't be a dum-dum, she says, and give little kids lollipops the same size as their tiny little airways. They could get stuck. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. I used to love dum-dums. I do, too. I remember going to the bank, and we used to love going to the drive-thru because they'd send you the dum-dums to the drive-thru. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on, Emily said folks should avoid serving snacks that could trigger a child's possible allergy. So this okay, is so like what? a peanut butter cup or uh -huh, a nut. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Number two is peanut butter. Yeah. Yep, yep. Number two is peanut butter. One out of every 40 kids in the United States is allergic to peanut butter. That's 2.5% of kids. Well, suck it up, kids. <laughs> I now, love see, peanut butter cups. <laughs> this, this brings an interesting point up, Okay. Uh -huh. Um, and, and something we don't, we don't talk about enough. It says here, peanuts is the leading cause of allergy related death in the U S for kids. Now that never used to be. They just didn't really report it. Do you think? Because yeah. Cause when I was a kid, there's, there's a couple of kids in my class that 
we're allergic to peanuts. And really, yeah. And this is you know the eighties and the nineties, so they didn't care what they fed you at lunch. You know, so I had a friend who he knew I loved peanut butter cups and stuff, so he'd always give me those or. If they stir something with nuts or something in it, like a school snack, you just give them to me. Really? Like, okay, yeah, but I don't think they reported on it. Yeah, I don't. I have a friend too who's allergic to eggs, like deathly allergic to eggs. And he would, you know, we couldn't. He had to watch what he ate at school. I remember somebody having an egg allergy at school. I don't ever remember anybody having an, a nut allergy. Really? No, I I remember one guy was. It was peanuts. And walnuts and stuff like, cause there's different type of nuts. So like the in the ground nuts, he was really allergic to, or the tree nuts, he yes. was allergic to, but tree not nuts. as bad. Yeah, yeah, like pine nuts and tree nuts. Yes, are are more common than a, a legume. Um, exactly. Yep. But I I saw a story. I want to say it was a couple of years ago, maybe a year or two ago, where they were talking about how we had kind of cultivated peanut allergies amongst children because we'd kept them away from peanut butter and kept them away from peanuts. Yeah. I remember when my daughter was born, they're like, you can't feed her peanut butter <clears throat> for her first couple of years. And I was like, why? Cause I didn't get it, you know, cause I'm not allergic. My wife or her mother wasn't allergic to it. So it's like, why, you yeah, know? Yeah. I don't know, getting her peanut butter anyways, and she's not allergic to it. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly it, and that's what they were saying in this in this article. They were saying the fact that doctors were telling parents you can't feed children peanut butter in their formative form. I can't even say the word formulative years was setting up this allergy in children. Okay, so we created the allergy almost. Yes, we're creating the allergy in some children. Yeah, whereas. You know, if if you're feeding kids PB and J sandwiches when they're younger, um, it's 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 opening them up to uh, their their little systems being able to accept uh, nuts. Right, I, that doesn't sound right. I know. Um, <laughs> I should give myself one of these. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it they're they're able to be able to digest and and accept. Uh, different legumes if they if they're exposed to them okay. as opposed to not being exposed to them as they get older and older and it's a foreign substance at that point when you right. try to you know consume peanut butter and 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 peanuts in general uh number three in itself is related to peanut butter and that's nuts Okay, so don't give them random peanuts or walnuts or yeah, cashews or trail mix or stuff like that. Again, setting up the whole argument for not exposing. Who gives kids nuts like these random nuts for you know what I mean? Uh, uh, That's like who gives kids pennies? It's the. Uh, do you remember as a kid getting pennies? Yeah, yeah, I did. I used to get pennies in my bag too. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. am I gonna do with a freaking penny? I don't know, but pennies. What am I gonna do with worst. one peanut? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, sometimes like the healthy house on the block tries to give trail mix or or oh yeah little yeah. snack size bags of peanuts or or cashews or or whatever. Um, yeah, the healthy house on the block always sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, Sorry if you're the healthy house on the block, by the way. <laughs> uh, number three is nuts for the same reason kids can be allergic. Don't be disappointed if a kid this, or don't disappoint a kid this year, it says, and be the reason that they have to come to the emergency department. The TikTok star's followers were quick to uh, take on board her advice with one sharing, I have four bowls, including one for peanuts if kids are allergic so they don't grab it. And I also have a separate one for suckers for older kids. <laughs> Why not just get one bowl of like a Hershey's bar? There you go. You don't have to worry yeah. about the lollipop. You don't have to worry about the peanuts. You're making the kids happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Others suggested scrapping sweets altogether. Boo, indeed. What? Yeah, no. No, no, no. That's no, what no, Halloween's no, no. all about. Yeah. Halloween's the one time. The, the, our dentist back home used to offer you money 
for your candy. Really? Yeah, like you come in, he'd weigh your candy and then give you money based on the weight of the candy. So what we would do is we would have the bag for ourselves and then we'd have another bag for the, for him. <laughs> and then we'd take the bag in, get it weighed, then split the money between the three of us and then go spend that on candy. Nice. <laughs> so essentially it backfired on him. <laughs> You and were, now I hear sit in front of you with no front teeth. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, man. Undoing is good work. Um, here's the worst idea in the, wor- in the world. The worst idea in the idea of worst ideas, if that makes any sense. I know it didn't. Um, they're saying instead of giving candy, give them a toothbrush and toothpaste. No. That way the kids TP your house, <laughs> which builds muscle and hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, my God. Toothbrush and toothpaste. Better than that, it, it teaches them how to punch a guy. <laughs> um, you know, here, Billy, you get in a nice square stance, and then when you throw your punch, you kind of put your hip into it. My um, son, when he was younger, and we took him trick-or-treating, someone gave him a pencil. What? It was like a Halloween themed pencil and they put it in his bag and he, he looks in his bag and he looks up and now he's got to be five maybe. Yeah. And he looks at his bag, looks up, looks in his bag, looks up and goes, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, buddy. We're, we're leaving this house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like the look on his face, Tim, like he, he slid his little Captain America mask up and looked up and went, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> like it was that stirred and that, you know? <laughs> Man, I'm all about, uh, my deal is I'm a diabetic. It's time for you to try and catch up, kid. That's, that's my, <laughs> that's my, th- my, my, my theme on, uh, on ha- Halloween. You, I, I'm going to try and fuel it as much as I can here. I've got 17 different varieties of candy. Let's go. Yeah, I used to take the kids out, and then when they got too old, and I always had the dad tax. Yeah. Okay, this is for you, this is for me, this is for you, this is for me. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, I, hell, I, I I tell the parents when they're with, you want one too? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know? I, I There was a house that we used to go to, and when the kids went up to trick-or-treat, he'd give them candy, and then he had beer for the, for the adults. I did that I did that a couple of years. I, I stopped doing it when <laughs> I had an off-duty police officer come to the door. Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, and he said, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, yeah, sorry. So I should put the hooker and cocaine away, huh? Is yeah. that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. So the, the hoe who's got the coke on her ass inside for, <laughs> for uh, the parents is probably not a good idea, huh? Yeah. So, but yeah, it, we've done uh, also the the hot chocolate station and okay. uh, with yep. with the with the complimentary Baileys if you want it. Yeah. Um, we've done that too in past years, but um, but yeah, that that got frowned upon by the off duty cop. Do you know what else was a terrible thing to get? Was those popcorn balls? Yes. Yeah. They never tasted good. No. But people loved loved giving those away too, probably yeah, because they like were it, cheap. Yeah, and in, in theory, they should be good because it's popcorn and, and corn syrup, you know. Like, yeah, but they never are. No, no, no. The only way they'd be good is if uh, I I think is if they're homemade. But again, you can never trust homemade stuff anymore. Nope. So, nope. yeah. But either way, I mean, I don't know. There's a good uh, pair of share topic. Your favorite Halloween candies. Yes. Yeah. Write us in and let us know what your favorite uh, and your worst, fa- least favorite. Yes, your least. Give favorite. us your favorite, and then give us your least or like your most disappointing. What did you treat. think of those? Uh, black. Remember the black and orange peanut butter. Uh, oh, I love those. Did you like those? Oh, I love those. I'm a, I'm a peanut butter guy. Yeah. So I love those. Those are great. I would get those even not around Halloween time just to eat. Yeah, they're, I, they're okay. I mean, you could eat too many of them. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Trust me. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was a large kid. <laughs> I'm a large man now. As was I. Um, 
Um, whereas, whereas my mom always put it out husky. Oh, yes. That was a clothing, you know. Yeah, I know. I hated it. Yeah. To this day, I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear someone call a kid husky. I just want to walk over and punch him. Like, yeah. no. He's just fat. Let's call him fat. That and tough skins. I don't remember those. You don't remember tough skins? No. That might have been a 70s thing. Tough skins. You got them at Sears. <laughs> That tells you how long ago it was. <laughs> I think it was Sears or JC Penny. And one of them had tough skins. Um, okay. Somebody will correct me on that deal. I know. Tim at darknessradio.com. Let us know. Yeah. Uh, your, uh, yes. your favorite Halloween candy. Um, the, uh, what did you call the, uh, the caramel stuff with the, the white swirls? Was that the moo something or another? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. We always call them car- caramel swirls. Caramel swirls. Those were good, too. Yeah, those were pretty good. Um, we used to get in trouble because my mom would get the little the little square caramels to melt and then dip the apples in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we'd always get to it before she could melt them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but we would replace, we'd, we'd unwrap them to put the wrapper back in the original bag. So she'd come in and it looked full from a distance because <laughs> it's got all the wrappers in there. Yeah. And then she'd open, like, dump it out and be like, what? And she'd yell at us kids. But, like, oh, but those they're were... just so good and they're addicting. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We used to see how many we could shove in our mouth before, you know. Like a little chipmunk. Yeah. Yep. 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 Do you, do you ever buy them to this day just to eat? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> sure do. In fact, yeah. got some out in the kitchen right now. There you go. See? That's how you know it's fall. That's right. That's right. That, and you don't like candy corn, huh? I do. No, I like candy corn. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah, say. I'm a candy corn guy. I'm a, I like the candy corn. I like the uh, the candy pumpkins. Okay. Those are pretty good. Yep. Yep. I'm not a I'm not a Cinnahots guy or Red Hots guy. I don't like those. No? No? No, I don't like anything with the cinnamon. Huh. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what's your least favorite Halloween candy? It seems like you're hitting on all cylinders here, but there's nothing. Do you remember those candies they... They were black licorice, but they were coated with like yellow or uh, white or blue candy. Oh, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were sold by Mike and Ike's. They weren't Mike and Ike's, but they no, were they're, sold they're, with Mike and Ike's. They're good and plenties. That's it. I yeah. hate those. You don't like oh. good and plenties? No, sir. See, I do. I like those. Nope. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I know, but I know a lot of people don't like good and plenties. Yeah, nope. Couldn't do it. Mm. And then snow caps. Yeah, no, I don't like snow caps either. Yeah. It's, like, it's like eating dirt. Yes, yes. Yeah. To me, it's like eating baking chocolate. Yeah, yeah, ugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Mrs. Bruiser loves those. Uh, no. So she knows when she comes home with a box that that's hers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's yours. She can keep those. She can keep yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. So again, folks, uh, right, right in for next week. Tell us what was your favorite Halloween candy or least favorite Halloween candy. And... Um, Oh, and here's a good one. When the kids come home with their Halloween buckets, what candy do you like to steal out of them? <laughs> and what candy do you feel you can get away with stealing out of them? Okay. Yeah. Because you know your kids know that you're stealing out of there. Yes. But which I always one, call it the, the parent tax. Yeah. Which one do you feel you can get away with stealing? I used to be able to get away with at least one Reese's peanut butter cup. Yeah. But then they would notice. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I, it was almost guaranteed I can get away with an Almond Joy or a Mount. Yeah, that's 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 an easy one. Yeah. Yeah. A twist. And then uh, Pixie Sticks I used to get away with, too, from them. Oh, but those are so good. <laughs> yeah, they are. Pixie Sticks. See, <laughs> an Uncle Bob story real quick. Yeah. Uncle Bob would come by. He, he came over a few times when I was younger, but I think he got banned from babysitting us <laughs> after the great pixie stick caper of, uh, of the 19, uh, I think it was the late 1970s. Okay. We were living in Ham Lake and um, he came over with, you remember Arby's had those big glasses and I'll make this quick cause we're, we're running out of time here, but Arby's had these big Looney Tunes glasses and he brought over these Tasmanian devil glasses. They were really deep. Um, and he filled them with pixie sticks. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, he also brought us some other, uh, really cool things. Uh, then proceeded to tell us jokes 
and get us really wired up on pixie sticks uh, until I peed my long johns. Because <laughs> he's just babysitting. He doesn't. Have, he, he gets to give you back. <laughs> That's right. Well, we we were at our house, so yeah. he got to leave. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just one joke after another, like Uncle Bob does. I mean, you've seen it here on the program. Yeah. And I just laughed and laughed until I peed. And then he was like, good night, and then left. <laughs> And Good I, for him. I peed. I ended up peeing my long johns in bed that <laughs> night. And that was the end of Uncle Bob babysitting us. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the story. But I got a really cool Tasmania Devil Arby's glass out of it. Well, there you go. Yeah. And I ate about, um, it was probably about 32 pixie sticks in one sitting. <laughs> it probably isn't good for a little little guy. But, yeah, pixie sticks. Well, I think we can narrow down where your diabetes came from. <laughs> I think so, yeah. There's a reason I got a bad foot. So. Thanks, Uncle Bob. Other than that, you know. I had a friend who used to dump his pixie sticks in his Mountain Dew and drink it. Oh. Yeah, during school. What? Uh-huh. That's insane. Yeah. I admire that man. Yeah. yeah. He's in prison now. Well, okay, I don't admire him that much. <laughs> but that's how you get in prison. Yep. Just dump your pixie sticks in your Mountain Dew and follow whatever impulse <laughs> leads you to wherever. Well, I'm pretty sure he had ADHD because he never got wired. It just made it centered him out. I'm like, oh, look, he made early forms of Ridlin. <laughs> it centered him out? Yeah. What? Yeah, he had some issues. Okay, I don't know how it, it must make Ritalin. I don't know. It, it, I, okay, my mind's blown right now. I can't. <laughs> I can't even wrap my head around that. I don't even know how how pixie sticks and Mountain Dew function in your system. Other than if I would have done that, either would have took the biggest nap I ever would have taken in my life. Yeah. Or I would have ran so hard I would have hit a a brick wall and became silly buddy. Yeah, you would have become the Flash going in the times the time force. Yeah, I, yeah, I would have went into a different dimension. There's just no way. I, I just can't even, I can't fathom it. I just can't. Anyways, we've gotten way off topic, but hey, it, it was it was a fun, a fun day. Oh, uh, what do you got going on this weekend? Actually, surgery on Monday, hernia repair. Oh, I just scheduled it yesterday, so. Oh, so you won't yeah. be with us uh, next week. No, I won't. I'm having a good old hernia repair. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll be contacting Mally Fox then for next week. Uh, yeah. All right. So it's the easy surgery in and out. Should be healed in a week. All right. So Bruiser will be on the shelf next week. And uh, we shall be turning to either Mally Fox or Jess for next week. Um. All right, so well then I know this much. Uh, we won't be calling. Um, we won't be calling uh, Joey Greco. Next week. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I I I was going to try and pull that trigger next week. I guess I won't. Um, okay. So uh, other plans for next week. Um, <laughs> thank you for telling me that. Uh, okay. Okay. So then, uh, uh, no can aside for this weekend for me. So uh, be the weekend after. But uh, okay. yeah, we're uh, we're expecting snow. Oh, yeah, that sucks. It's coming soon, so I think I think the chippers are on their way out. Um, but tomorrow on the show, the coming of Raw, and I'm not talking about Raw as war. We're exploring the Ka with Raw. How does that sound? Is it Raw like as an R A like the Egyptian yes. god? Yeah, like the okay. Egyptian god. Okay. Yeah. Ra Castaldo is our guest. He has, uh, or he had a very rare birth, put it that way. Um, he had a very rare birth. He was born still inside the call or amniotic sac, and it just went from there. Okay. He also had a near-death experience. He had an NDE, which seemed to amplify his already natural-born hypersensitivity in a new way, which opened him up to harmonic frequencies and vibrations. And yes, when he had his NDE, he was stuck inside the magnetosphere. We'll talk about that. Nice. Some really bizarre things have happened to Ra. All right. 
Lots of weird stuff tomorrow, Bruiser. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> this one's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So he also has his own uh, he has his own show as well on Saturday nights. We'll talk about that. Um, lots of interesting stuff going on with Raw. So his real name is Raffaele Antonio Castaldo. So we'll talk about Raw tomorrow uh, on the program, and we'll talk with Raw on the program tomorrow. So it'll be an interesting show. All right. That's for sure. That's, t- that, uh, that's tomorrow on Darkness Ray. So for Bigger City Bruiser, I'm Tim Dennis. Thank you so much for continuing to listen to the program. If you have a guest you want to hear here on the program, just ring me up, Tim at DarknessRadio.com. We'll be glad to get them here on the show. Thank you so much for listening today, folks. We'll see you tomorrow for the best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This has been Darkness Radio. Darkness Radio.